Holy shit! The road to the finale of this anime has begun. Talagang naramdaman ko. Why? Because of one person. Si Hayase. Before we get to that. Sa unang part ng episode, uh, they were they were celebrating the, their victory over the knockers. And Fushi getting back his uh, getting back three of his forms. Yung nga, si Marge, si Oniguma, at si Gugu. After Fushi inadvertently inadvertently um, puts his friends to sleep. Nabasa niya yung, pa, yung parang librong dala-dala parati ni ni Tonari. So, well, he now knows everything. Um, Tonari's complete backstory. Even her intent to um, to use him. Medyo nahuli siya ni Tonari doon eh. And Tonari just said, I'm sorry. Pinagkibit-balikat na lang ni Fushi. After that, Tonari completely rewrites her backstory. Which led to... Um, siguro a backstory, a backstory sequence that's... Pero mga 3 to mga 3 to 4 minutes mga ganun. And it's a real tell all. Kaya pala nandito si Tonari it's because of her father who was accused lang of murder. A- accused lang ah. Dinala na sila dinala sila mag-ama rito. Like Fushi her father enters the tournament. So eventually nanalo siya. Pero Right in front of Tonali, he gets poisoned. Mm, namatay. Uh, talagang, hindi tumatagal yung... Y- hindi tumatagal ang buhay ng mga nagiging island leader. <laughs> probably a day, probably hours after becoming the island's leader, ayun, nilason siya, yung tatay ni Tonari. And all he could leave Tonari was this book. Uh, blank, blank na na hardcover book siya. So, kumbaga, uh, you can re- you can write down notes, you can write down anything. So, yun ang yun ginawa ni Tonari. And, and, as time went on, nakilala na ito, nakilala, na, nabuo na niya yung barkada niya. Then, of course, uh, at age, well, by, by age eh, at age 14, she meets Fushi. Yun pala, kagagawan din ni Haya si ito. Inujok pala ni Hayase itong si Tonari na na ilagay si Fushi at para at, at, at Pioran dun sa slave ship. Kumaga ining ininganyo siya na oh ito ilagay niyo. Bukong mananalo sa tournament ito. Sinulsulan pala sinulsulan pala siya ni Hayase. So this was all Hayase is doing. While this was going on, Fushi was able to see Pioran again. Of course, eh, nabawi na niya si March. Mm. Todo akyat siyang ganun sa mataas na pader leading to the leading to Pioran's prison cell. Nakapasok din siya because he, he turned into that mole. So kasang-kasa siya doon sa bintana. Kita sila and and Pioran just gave him a very a very good parting words na mag-ingat siya sa finals. So lumabas na siya. Then, oh, the day of the finals came. Nagharap na sila ni Hayase. And Hayase told all. So, habang naglalaman sila, sinabi, sinabi rin ni Hayase doon na siya ang pumatay kay Parona. Kaya pala, kaya pala namatay si Parona. It's her doing. Talag, talagang siya mismo ang pumatay dito. So, what? Fushi loses it. Final scene. Mm. Hayase beats him. With the same poison na ginamit sa, na ginamit sa kanila nila March na para i-hostage sila ni Hayase. That same poison did him in. But all throughout the all throughout the match before that cheap shot by Hayase, she was totally outclassing Fushi. E mo kakabisado na niya ang lahat ng transformation ni Fushi. Alam niya kung ano ang ang i-anticipate na weak point dito. As Oniguma, she took one of his eyes out. As Gugu, hinintay niya bubuka ang ibuka ni ni Fushi yung bunga nga doon niya, doon niya pinanatan. And as Parona, haya si totally figured it out. This is not Parona. 
This is not her. This is not her arch rival. So, ibig sabihin, well, ibig, isa lang ibig ko sabihin nun mga ka-lifestyle. Fushi may, may copy parona, may turn into parona, but he is not as, um, he is not as fast as her when it comes to, uh, when it comes to trading blows. Kaya, confident si Hayase eh, na matatalo niya si Fushi. Ayun. Talo. Well, not by, not by a knockout, not by uh, submission, but a cheap shot. Tinurukan siya ng laso dito. Kasi, well, on Jananda, there are no rules. Much less this tournament. Kaya, ang malas ni Pushy. Overall, it's another fucking good episode from this anime. Wow! Uh, although, Hayase's win was rather hard to watch. Lumabas na pagkademonyo ng, ng babaeng ito. She has proven once again that she is the big bad of this anime. It's not the knockers. Okay? It's not the knockers. But, Hayase. Pace pa lang. The moment Tonori told her backstory of the time she, she met Fushi, at yun, pinakita na si Hayase pala ang may, may ang puno dulo ng lahat ng to, that's when the pace picked up. Because, Surprise! The main arch villainess of this anime has been working, has been working her dirty fingers already. Face picked up right there. Okay, naging tense na. But the pacing was well balanced. Well balanced enough to elicit the proper emotions from the viewer. And if you've been watching to your eternity all this time, you know how how evil. Hayase is. Okay? How determined she is to to kill Fushi. Despite, alam niya, na unkillable ito. The only way, the only way um, she can beat Fushi is by turning Fushi into her slave. Yan, ganun lang yan. To her lab rat, so to speak. If you know how vile a character Hayase is, yup, mararamdaman mo that the pacing has picked up from that moment. Hindi nung uh, nagkita na sila ni Fushi sa finals. Nope. Way earlier than that. It's, again, it's that point where Tonari told, uh, told us that Hayase was the one who told her to put Fushi and Pioran on the slave ship. Tanginang yan. Demonyo talaga si Hayase. Flow naman. Well, first gear ship was when nung sinulsul ni Hayase si Tonari na i-recruit si Lapiora. That was the first gear ship because it really gave us an indication of how um, uh, that Hayase has been working in the in the background to 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 totally screw Fushi over. So far, this at uh, the the Jananda arc, uh, as I well I can call that the Jananda arc. The Jananda arc has is all Hayase's doing. Talagang siya ang puno dulo ng lahat ng ito. She just wants to to get back at Fushi. Pero <laughs> tigas na mukha mo Hayase. Sino ba pumatay kay Marks? Di ba ikaw? Ha? <laughs> Yun nga, yun nga sinabi ni Fushi nung finals. Kasi, si Fushi mismo nakakita nun. Second gear shift is when... No! The second and final gear shift came when... Ayun na. When Fushi realized who his opponent will be in the finals. Tanggal ng... Nagtanggal ng hood. Si Hayase. And the marks Fushi let as Oniguma nandun. It's on her face. The final gear shift that I saw here will play a role down the line in this road to the finale. Of course, um, Hayase eventually beats Fushi in the finals. That was absolutely hard to watch. Talagang, which villain in To Your Eternity has, uh, has a much easier time against Fushi? It's Hayase. For the record between Fushi and the Knockers, Ano pala? 
3 and 2. 3 3 wins, 2 losses si Fushi against the against the Knockers. Because um the two most recent wins by the Knockers, tatlong forms ang nakuha sa kanya. Kaya naging tatlong panalo ni Fushi is because of course the his first win against them. Yung first yung first meeting nilang dalawa. The second win came when he was able to defeat the Knockers Onigoma form. He figured figured out a way to beat it. Then his most recent win was yun nga yung naku, nabawi niya lahat ng lahat ng lahat ng forms lahat, yung three forms niya si Onigoma, March at saka si Gugu. Of course with the help of the um, the other islanders. So that's 3 2 nga. So who has who has the easiest time? Si Hayase. 1 1 1 siya against Dito. Of course uh, his first loss was this one. Yung sa finals ng tournament ng Jananda. Wow, I, I tell you guys that was hard to watch. Okay? That was fucking hard to watch. So plot wise uh planchado. Bakit? Because what? Um the animators had to tell Tonori's backstory on why she ended up here in the island, what her goal is, and basically her mistake of not hiding that book from Fushi. Ayun. Kasi no nakatulog sila, nabasa ni Fushi lahat 'yun sa libro niya. And well, yep. I think Fushi doesn't give a shit anymore. <laughs> All he wants is to be in the finals. And Hayase was the monkey wrench all along in this uh, in this arc. She's the monkey wrench. Kaya, pero, it was well, uh, the plot was well ironed out. Hindi nila pinatagal ang backstory ni Tonari dito because the thing that matters here is Fushi's finals matchup with Hayase. And for and yes, for good reason. Hayase has proven that she is the big bad of this anime. At siya pa magiging yan. For probably for the final, for this and the final four episodes of this anime, siya ang makakalaban ni Fushi. Kapanapan na big yun. And the plot will make you realize that. So, pace, flow, and plot. I almost wasn't able to distinguish the pace and the plot from one another. That's how fucking good this anime is. Grabe. Talagang... Talagang umira ng pagkademonyo ni, ni Hayase dito. But she knows that she can, she can beat Fushi in... Uh, uh, when it comes to hand-to-hand -hand combat, eh, mukhang kabisado na niya eh. Yung mga transformations ni Fushi, alam niya kung ano mga weak points nito. So, why resort to that cheap shot? That goes to show you how much of a villainess Hayase is. So, to your eternity, episode 16, isip po. Oh, <laughs> two thumbs up! I could really feel the road to the finale in this episode. Talagang naramdaman ko na. As we now know who Fushi is going to face uh, during during the road to this finale. Now the knockers, they probably they probably will show up. Uh, I'm going I'm going to anticipate that during uh, this road to the finale that the knockers will solid, suddenly show up and go at it go at Fushi once again. But in the meantime, yes, Hayase is the big bad of this anime right now. And she will continue to torment the main protag well into the finale. And, uh, well, nakita niyo ba yung, nakita niyo ba yung teaser for the next episode? Ito lang isang bagay na magagaranti ko sa inyo mga ka-lifestyle. Demonyo! Si Hayase! Demonyo ito! Imagine, uh, imagine killing a child for just for the thrill of it. Imagine driving her arch rival to suicide because she wants to get back at Fushi. And now, this cheap shot 
to Fushi just to become the island leader. Her evil knows no bounds right now. And I hope Fushi snaps out of this poison real quick because mukhang madad, mukhang madadami mga kaibigan niya sa Jananda. And so are the other people on this island that believe in, that believe in him. Mukhang madadamay. Looks like, yeah, knowing how twisted Hayase's brain is, she might declare martial law. That's scary, right? That is fucking scary. So again, to your eternity, episode 16. Two thumbs up. Another two thumbs up for this anime, Next episode has been teasered. I don't want to keep my hopes up as to what's going to happen to the rest of uh, Fushi's inner circle in Jananda. Mukhang, mukhang magkakagipitan. <laughs> as long as Fushi is out because of that poison, yep, Hayase will have her way. Grabe. Talagang demonyo ito. So, we'll just have to wait for next week and watch that episode. So, wala, baka wala nang deep dive, deep dive dito. We're, we'll, we will simply root for Fushi here and and his uh, and his uh, and his Jananda gang. Alright? So, we're going to we're going to root for them from now on. We've, we've done our deep dives for the previous episodes and they're some of the most empowering ones. Alright? But for now, yep. We're gonna root for the we're going to root for the main pro tag all the way. So until until the next episode happens, keep on watching the reviews in this digest, Maka Lifestyle. I'll be counting on you for that. Bottom line, the SWE is now interrogating both uh what's the boy's name and his mother the way they are interrogating this kid is through devices and they're also even examining the Korokis and their teammates Michio and Reka for uh well of course for their latent power we can call uh Takuya latent because he's been using his and si Yuya pala meron din siya when the kid went berserk he tried to escape took some some SWE personnel with him and he started through these uh, through these hostages he starts shooting at any other um, at any other SWE agent so he goes berserk and Yuya suddenly well he remember Yuya doesn't have any control over his power so basta na lang na nabasa ang utak ng bata and he saw everything there. Uh, talagang talagang binalak ng batang ito na patayin yung mga estudyante yung nag, ano, sa kanya. Uh, yung mga, what you call this? Yung mga nabuli sa kanya. Yeah, he was successful. Okay? He led them to suicide. And he almost took down Michio and Reiko with them. So meanwhile, the Kiriharas are in, uh, well, are in the vicinity. Now, yeah. Well, sensed the kid's powers being used. Ayun nga, sabi niya, Kuya, we, we need to, we need to get that kid out of there. Sabi niya, sa kuya niya si Naoto. Their two, uh, their two newfound allies re relented, but eventually, um, uh, they, they were, uh, they eventually helped them. Yun pa ng mga sumalbak sa mga kapatid. Uh, his name is, his, his name is Mike, and he's part of the Free Speech Alliance. They joined the Free Speech Alliance. Pero, uh, at, pero hindi yata naniniwala itong si Mike na that the Kirihara brothers are both psychics. It's gonna be a very interesting alliance. As they were about to go into headquarters, may sumabog. Yung pala, it, Takoya used his powers again. So, tumilapon lahat. Tumilapon lahat. Even his own brother and the kid. Nearly everyone is a bloody mess, and Takoya just lied motionless, okay, face first on the ground. 
he has no pulse so they were trying to revive him and the kid's mother got thrown out of the building so the Kiriharas were able to save that person and they drove off that was the final scene overall it's a fucking good episode episode it was rather i don't know if mundaneness uh is required in in such in such an episode but you know the mundaneness of the first half of the episode seems to um send signals that something big is going to, is going to happen enter the second half of the episode where the swe is interrogating this uh this psychic kid and his mother kasi ang kaya siya nagwala Uli, the kid just wants to be with his mother again. The pacing will make you realize that. And the episode was well paced. Yung ane. You can say there was a build up phase during the first half. It really felt that way. <laughs> Flona man. Well, first gear shift here was when the four teammates were being examined. Of course, si Tawya, alam na meron. Si Yuya, meron na rin. But, Reika and Michio, uh, wala mas kaan sa kanilang signs na that they're, also, that they're also becoming psychics. Why did I call this a gear ship? Simply lang, this government really wants to control psychics for their own purposes. Pero sinasabi nila sa labas na, oh, huwag kayo maniwala dyan kung hindi aarestoy namin kayo. Like how Mike described this government. Totalitarian. It is a totalitarian government. This gear shift will also make your blood boil when it comes to this government's corruption. Second gear shift. The moment that the kid was able to escape custody and well, he starts going berserk. Not even Kimmy. Not even Kimmy couldn't couldn't read his mind kasi talagang sa sobrang sa sobrang lakas ng psychic power niya hindi niya ma-penetrate ang utak ng bata and she was also scared as shit as to what she was sensing that what she was sensing from this child talagang she just couldn't take a chance uh, siguro she figured oh my god mukhang, mukhang demonyo to nakuli namin na if there's anything this gear shift uh, is trying to say to the audience it's this don't try to take control of things you don't understand. That's the bottom line of this gear shift. Final gear shift is when Tawya probably, um, you can say, he overworked his powers this time, resulting in him, in him collapsing, his heart stopping. Sini CPR na Right after. Why did I call this a gear shift? Another simple answer. This goes to show you that even psychics have their limits. Siguro talagang so, so, sa sobrang stress niya, he just had to use his powers to the maximum and poof, nasaid siya, resulting in him just dropping like a log. His heart stopped. You would feel sorry for Takuya here for doing that kasi Although he is fully aware of his powers, he, he still cannot control them fully. He still hasn't mastered them. Yun ang idinitigdik sa kanya ni Kimi all the time. You should master your powers as soon as possible. And she's also saying the same thing to Yuya. Now, it's been confirmed na may latent psychic power na rin si Yuya. And... Yuya was able to use this on that kid but uh, well, right now I telepathic is not the description for him parang ano siya uh, mind reader he's sort of a mind reader not, not telepathic he can't communicate mentally well yet or, but one thing's for sure Yuya is a mind reader so uh, without him knowing, nabasa niya 
ang kung ano ang laman ng utak ng batang yan. So, na-conf- na- na-confirm talaga na he was the one responsible for all those mass, for that mass suicide in that high school. These three gear shifts that I saw, especially the um, final gear shift, will play a role down the line in this anime. Yeah, that's the way, uh, that's the way I see it here. Blood wise, Alinis. Right? The blood was was disturbingly clean because the way the way Yuya uh, well scanned the kid's mind, talaga and and uh, the whole screen was blood red. Oh yeah! If you saw that episode, mga lifestyle, you would you would find it really disturbing, considering that the one. Uh, doing the scanning is Yuya who's, well, who has just discovered his psychic power Talagang, although blurry and covered in blood red yung screen that means only one thing hindi pa kontrolado ni Yuya ang powers niya pero, naki, pero kitang kita kung ano yung laman ng utak ng bata the plot will make you realize how disturbing how disturbing down Uh, down the road of this episode is imagine having powers like that you can read minds you can control minds you can you can wipe out memories Ooh, that is fucking scary okay. that's The mere mention of it, tumatayo palagi po ko. Pace, flow, and plot, yup. They came together for this episode. So giving us another great episode from this anime. Impressive. So, Night Dead 2041, episode 4. as a cyberpunk anime right, because the three vital elements all, are all here plus they throw in a supernatural tone nearly all the uh, uh, well the Kirihara brothers and the Kuroka brothers well confirmed all of them are psychics now down the line they will face each, face each other just that again two on two Oh, I'm, I'm now expecting a two-on-two battle between these these two clans. Let's run down their uh, their powers. Now the Kirihara, so remind you, both Kirihara brothers have fully mastered their powers. Now Naoto is a telekinetic, pero what his what uh, uh, is deadly arc telekinetic bursts. Because, Uh, meron siyang kumaga meron siyang rate if, uh, yeah meron siyang effective range o oh, yan naman is an empath he doesn't he, can, he couldn't read minds he couldn't uh, control minds but he does sense emotions kaga from from great distances he can sense strong emotions strong forms of either positive or negative energy he can sense that See, si, well, on the side of the Korokis, si Takuya, he can actually emit his own EMP. Kaya nadi-disrupt niya lahat ng lahat ng electronic devices around him. And if the if the EMP field he releases is strong enough, yup, it can match Naoto. Tarang mukha magbabangga, mukha magbabangga ng dalawang pangani na to. Down the down the line in this anime, see si Yuya naman is you can say a scanner. Yeah, he can't uh he can't literally control minds like uh like what Kimi does. Yung isang lang kasama na telepath na uh, sorry na psychic din. What he what he can do is to scan. 
person's mind. Katulad ng ginawa niya rito sa bata. Eh yung pala, ang nag-trigger pala rito sa power ng batang ito, yung pagkakapatay ng isa sa kanila, sa kanyang, sa kanyang aso. You remember the puppy buried in the factory na na-sense ni Naoya na, uy, ang lakas ng negative energy nito. That was the kid's dog. At pinatay ng isa niyang piniktima, ng isa niyang piniktima. This is what you get when you when you tinker with black magic. It may not, uh, the devil may not come out to get you, but there are reper- there are repercussions guaranteed if you mishandle it. Kanon lang yan. Wow. So, yun ang na-sense ni Yuya. Na, well, nakita niya actually. So, we can say that Yuya is a scanner. So, a scanner versus an empath. Hmm. How are these two going to, uh, to to square each other up? Si Yuya at si Nauya. Really love to see that matchup. But, look. Although we may be in the fourth episode, it's, we're only four episodes in. I can really see down the line that these two clans will go, to, will go head to head, at one point or another. After this, that's going to be one hell of a matchup. Okay, the Korokis versus the Kiriharas. Tell you the truth, mga that I really can't wait for that. So again, Nighthead 2041. Episode 4 Another two thumbs up for this anime Mama Lifestyle Well, as usual for this anime No teasers You know the real Mama Lifestyle When it comes to these situations Wait for next week And watch the next episode While you're at it Mama Lifestyle Enjoy the other reviews in this digest. For the first time, bukang chronological order na ang, ang anime na to. Opening scene, it's obvious, they have carried it over fra- from episode 5. Frost recuperating and her companions have decided to, well, to, well, to of course, help her out uh, in the recovery process. Si Sally at si Carrot Naghanap ng mga carrots. Eh, kumbaga, yun yung... Yun ang pinakagamot niya eh. Basically, carrot met up with this market vendor again na uh, discriminate si Frau in the last episode. Well, Sally finally meets him. Eh, and after she's heard enough, she punches him. Okay? Knockout punch ang nangyari. While all this was happening, Miko to is... Um, Uh, going as usual way to the, for, towards the next town kasama niya si Dog uh, it's just it's just named Dog okay, yung companion niya they met up with Milly so, yung dating ogre na madre Migo to was about to kill her kasi yung, yung kasi yung at that time yung sungay niya putol na di ba nga pinutol ni Sally nung episode 2 uh, I'll explain so papatayin na sana ni Migo to ito and pinigilan siya ni Dog and Wow! Dog, something revealed about Mikoto. That this is not the real Kibitsu Mikoto. Kumaga, kinuha lang yung pangalan. This is a big revelation in the anime. So, the Kibitsu Mikoto we have been seeing in this anime, is it the real one? Kumbaga eh, kinuha lang yung pangalan. Much like Vanitas. Yeah, parang ganun yan. Si yung Vanitas of the case study of Vanitas, hindi na yun yung totoong Vanitas. He, he's just human. The original Vanitas is a vampire. Parang ganito rin dito yun sa Peach Boy Riverside. This is not the real Kibitsu Mikoto after all. Inexplain na ng mabuti ni Dog when he was uh, when he was stopping Mikoto from killing Mili. These were his exact words. 
I am not going to let I'm not going to let you disrespect that name. Ooh. Okay. So we can now assume that dog has met the original Kibitsu Mikoto already or nakasama na niya ang original. You can say that the, that this Mikoto is a poser because uh, bottom line from what dog has said the real Kibitsu Mikoto would not uh, would not kill this kind of an ogre kasi powerless na. Ano ba magagawa nito? Okay, puto na sungay. What 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 damage can this ogre do? Yan ang point ni ni Dog. Siguro ganon ang mindset ng original na Kibitsu Miko to. Uh, it's quite honorable kasi the enemy has lost its power, so why kill it? Just let just let him suffer that kind of life. There was a mid ogre out to kill Mili. Nakita sila ni ni Mili and of course si Miko to. And in one surprising turn, Millie pulls out the remainder of her horn in front of Migoto. Sabi pa niya, O ito, Migoto, wala na akong sungay. Ayan, patayin mo na yung ogre na yan. Bahala ka na. Migoto did the unthinkable. He saved Millie instead. And, um basically spared that ogre it's basically a mid ogre dalawa pa nga sungay and uh, he just explained to Millie on why he uh, why he spared that ogre ang explanation niya he spared that ogre because he saw it in that ogre that he is complete that he completely outclassed it siguro out of pride <laughs> final scene sinabi ni Mili na gusto niyang sumama kay Miko to. And, well, Miko to reluctantly agreed. Again, napagkamanan siyang babae, si Miko to. <laughs> napagkamanan naman siyang babae. Eh, alam mo, nakita mo yun yung get up. Super haba ang buhok. At talagang mo, mo, mukha siyang babae, boses pa siyang babae. But he's actually a guy. <laughs> Overall, it's a really good episode. A really good episode. Unfortunately, I'll have to give it a um. I cannot give it a a two thumbs up anymore. I've already explained myself in the last review. So, as an act of professionalism, we're going to go to the usual process. A R B style. Mommy, I'm gonna explain you. Base. It was. Understandably slow for the first two thirds of the episode, because it's an aftermath episode. It is what happened after Frau goes uh, goes one punch man on Kuketsky, who we saw in some scenes in this episode. Na pinagmamas na ng kaluluwa niya yung pagsunog ng mga tao sa bangkay niya. Yup, binalahura na mga tao ang bangkay niya public burning yung nangyari that's how much uh, humans hate ogres in this anime na kahit bangkay na babastusin pa rin nila okay so yeah he was just he was just yeah, ano, ano pa magagawa niya kaluluwa na lang siya at uh, what in the process he meets Atla yung whom we found out that this was Frau's former companion, of course, in the mortal world. So, well, that well that explains how um, how Frau has met this angel. Eh, dati pala niyang kasamahan to na namatay na, na nauna lang namatay. So, yun, sinamahan lang sinamahan naman ni Atlas si Kuketsky in uh, observing his body's final final moments. Then eventually, nagpa nagpa release na siya kay Atla kasi because well, there's nothing holding on to him in this mortal world, so no choice na siya kundi uh, umakyat na sa afterlife. Now, the pacing made me realize this. Okay, it was slow enough kasi aftermath nga eh. Again, I'll repeat, it's an aftermath episode, 
But, uh, the latter third, medyo pumikap yung pace. Kasi, mukhang magkakasagupa na naman ang lahi ng mga ogres kay Miko to. But, sort of, Millie threw a monkey wrench in Miko to's plans. Because she knows that she is still an ogre. May natitira pa sa sungay niya eh. And Miko to knows about that horn. Lantara naman niya sinabi during that confrontation. I'll just let you two ogres kill each other. At kung sino mang matira sa inyo, yun ang papatayin ko. <laughs> Brutal! I think um, Millie, Millie made the wise choice here. Although it's really painful. Binuno na yung, yung remainder ng kanyang sungay. Mm. Miko to, ayan. Hindi na ako ogre. Pakipatay na yung pakipatay na yung punyetang yan. <laughs> because this mid-ogre is has orders to kill her. Ta first move na siya eh. Dito, laking laslas. So, she, she's losing a lot of blood. And she, well, if you lose a lot of blood, you, there's a 50-50 chance that you cannot that you cannot fight. She has no choice but to concede. Pa! Tinanggal na niya yung sungay at sinabi na niya kay Miko to, ayan, patay mo ni yan na lang ang ogre sa harapan mo. Patayin mo na yan. So, the, pace, the pacing of this episode was really good. Okay, I gotta hand it, I gotta hand it to that. Flo naman. Well, first gear shift was, was when Sally punched that market vendor, who, the market vendor who discriminated Frau in the previous episode. Yup. She punched her light, she punched his lights out. And almost went. Buntik na nga niya, ilabas yung pitch niya rito sa, sa market vendor na to. Sa, sa buisit niya. All the, of all the things this market vendor, vendor said about Frau in front of her and Carrot. Uh, yeah, she's heard enough. <laughs> yeah, I've heard enough from you. I'm going to, I'm going to punch your lights out. I'm punching your lights out right now. Mm. Talaga, talaga sa, sa matindig sapak na ganun. And she, and she doesn't have the peach I hit. Talaga bagsak. She went Manny Pacquiao on this market vendor. Basically. Second gear shift is when, what? Well, uh, the camera suddenly panned to what, what Mikoto and Dog were doing. So, this means that Mikoto's side of the story is now being exposed. I think it's good timing. This gear shift made me realize that it looks like Asai Production is now relenting on what it initially planned for this anime. Because it's obvious, Episode 6 is the, is the direct aftermath of Episode 5. And, well... Let's move on to the to the final gear shift, okay? Final gear shift is when Milia decided to um, to be Mikoto's companion. Mikoto. Like I said a while ago, this is not the real Kibitsu Miko, Mikoto pala based on what we learned from this episode. Bakit ko tinawag na gear shift to? Because I got a good feeling this will lead to episode 3. This will lead to episode 3 kasi I think this was this was the same town wherein they were conducting when they were when um ah oh, I forgot that guy's name basta the swordsman yung swordsman companion nila nila Sally Frau and the Carrot He enters this tournament and so did Milia at doon sila nag uh, doon nakita sila Sally at Miko to Uli. And this, well, we, we all know what happened in episode 3. Sally has been given a choice by Mikoto and Sumiragi. Sino ang kakampihan dun ni Sally? This gear shift will probably lead us to what happened in episode 3. So, ba- backtrack tayo. You know, this is one disadvantage of jumbling the episodes. These three gear shifts um, 
either have probably played a role in this anime or have yet to play a role. Because, well, jumbling up episodes, I don't know now which gear shift in this episode is crucial. I basically have no idea. So, plot-wise, mm, no, there were no, there were no uh, backstory scenes. So, kumaga, brief flashbacks lang. Malinis ang plot for the first time. And then, yeah, for the first time since episode 2. Since episode 2, malinis ang plot. Because it totally focused on two things seamlessly. First, yung uh, aftermath ng ng pagkakapatay ni Frog kay, kay Kyuketsuki. Okay, so that so what so basically the things that happened in episode 5. Then uh, the story then focused on what Mikoto was doing. Mikoto's side of the storyline. So they made it look as if well, those are actually two stories. Two plots, basically. They mended it into one. Uh, malinis pa rin ang episode. Because there were no side stories. There were no uh, confusing backstories. Nope. Just this. But the third gear ship, again, the third gear ship made us realize that, well, made me personally realize that this is going to lead back to episode 3. Halatay. All in all, yeah, malinis pa rin ang plot. So, pace, flow, and plot, we all came together for this episode. And it's another, it's another good episode for this anime. But again, the jumbling of episodes really made me, really makes me want to finish this review as quickly as possible. So, Peach Boy Riverside, Episode 6. Well, uh, I already gave my word. What's up? Now, as much as it pains me to announce this, uh, I'm still going to announce this for you, mga kalaysta. My announcement of Episode 5, uh, during my review of Episode 5, that um, this anime won't get the two thumbs up from me anymore because of Asahi's decision to jumble the episodes. Well, let's give credit where credit is due first. Asahi Production followed the chronological order of the manga for Episodes 5 and 6. I gotta give them that. But, it's too late already. They've already made their decision to to jumble the episodes. No, nope, I am not down with that. Bottom line. Although uh, they're probably trying to to uh, to silence whatever criticism they have they have gotten for the past six episodes. Kaya nila for two episodes straight they've been following the chronological order of the manga. For me, uh, it's still too late. Dapat ginawa nyo na yan as early as episode 4. Episode 4 is the actual pilot of this anime. Sana ganun na ginawa nyo. You've already panned the focus on Mikoto's side of the story in this episode. Pero it's still too late. Ako, I'm not going to... I'm not going to uh, relent in my own decision to not give this anime the two thumbs up anymore. I'm going one thumb up na lang. I have pretty much given this anime the death sentence. I'm going one thumb up na lang matatanggap eh. So, it's pointless for me now to to continue reviewing this anime. Sayang. This was a really good episode. No, the, the last two, episodes 5 and 6 were really good ones. Sayang. Don't blame me. Blame Asahi Productions decision for uh, for for jumbling the episodes and as a consequence my decision not to review it anymore this episode will be the last time I'm going to review Peach Boy Riverside sorry mga kalaysta if you find 
Oh, the anime good. Good for you. I find the anime good, but story-wise, it doesn't serve uh, it doesn't serve my purpose as an anime critic. If I'm going to uh, if I'm going to still review this anime wherein I've already given it the proverbial death sentence last last time, it's pointless already. So, uh, you've heard it from me. Episode 6 will be the last episode of Peach Boy Riverside that I am going to review. If you still want to... If you, still, if you guys still want to finish this anime's run, go ahead. But, well, I may or may not watch it uh, without reviewing it. But definitely, I will not review it anymore. Because... I've pretty much given uh, my final verdict last review. So, tama na ito. Tama na yung review ko na ang first half ng run na to. Kasi, Asai's decision not to uh, not to follow the sequential, not to follow the, the manga's chronological order for this anime, for its anime adaptation, it's, yeah, it still stands. Pasensya na tayo. Pasensya na tayo, Asai Production. So again, and for the last time, Peach Boy Riverside, Episode 6. Um, goodbye, Peach Boy Riverside. It's been fun. Like I said a while ago, if you still want to watch this anime, go ahead. As for me, I'm not going to review it anymore. It's pretty much out of the roster from now on. But uh, I feel accountable to you guys. So I am going to start looking for a replacement to Peach Boy Riverside. But no, I've already seen a replacement. Uh, as, as early as this morning, as of this recording. You're going to find out what that replacement is in a matter of probably uh, next week. Pero... Hindi ko i reveal agad. Like uh, like what I did for the start of volume 5, puro question marks yung nag-debut na re- nag-debut na anime. Yep, we're going to do it that way. So that you can figure out which anime replaced Peach Boy Riverside. Right? So, uh while you're waiting for that, enjoy the other reviews in this uh digest manga lifestyle. All right? So, enjoy lang kayo. Chill. One thing is for sure, Satoko has become the queen of screw jobs, right? She has manipulated Rika, she has manipulated her own uncle Tepe here, and well, based on what has transpired in this episode, looks like she is also being played by Yua herself. Right? Yung nagbigay sa kanya ng power na Magganito. Probably Sato doesn't realize it. You is being entertained by all by all of uh what what is Sa- what Sato has done these past few episodes. Grabe. If you haven't seen the Sato arc of season one, hindi nyo maiintindihan ito. Right? This is practically the s- the uh, the entire summary of that arc, according to Satoko, basically the gist of this episode. Final scene. Well, Yua is gloating over what Satoko has done in this episode, and she finds both Satoko and Rika entertaining. Hmm. Makes you uh, makes you really really makes you want to think if oh, who's who's the real villain here. Overall, it's another fucking good episode from this anime. Grabe! I have been telling you guys since since the get go. If you did not watch season one of the reboot, do not watch season two. But still, I am doing this for for the sake of all. The anime fans who had 
who have watched season one. For your sakes, guys, let's do it. Let's do this ARD style. Pace. Diabolically slow. That's all I can say. Sabo has been screwing over. Ha has screwed over Rika and and Tepe, her own uncle, in this episode. If you did see the um, the arc where Satoko's social case got involved, yung uh, nabalita na inaabuso siya ni Tepe, yung mismo uncle niya, according to the pacing of this episode, that was not how Satoko viewed it. Hmm? Pinalalabas niya sa episode na to that that whole Tepe thing is her doing. The pacing will make you realize that. This is how diabolical Satoko has become. And her main goal for uh, acquiring this much power is to keep Rika in Hinamizawa. She can be a real devil for just for doing this. Flow naman. First gear shift is when Satoko had that heart-to-heart talk with Rika at Oyashiro Sama's temple. Right? Uh, why don't you? Why are you? Why are you thinking this, these thoughts for Hinamisawa? Why are you? Why did you call a hit village in your dreams? Do these qualify as questions? From the way I heard it, you get me mga lifestyle. If you have seen the episode, talagang her line, Sato's line of questioning, it it will make you think that. Talagang kinukonsyensya niya si Rika rito. This particular gear shift is crucial because remember, season 2 is happening because of Satoko. Saksak niya sa utak niyo for this season. Second gear shift is well, she was able to convince Tepe, her uncle Tepe to to go back with her in Hinamizawa. Dun sa luma, dun sa bahay na mga hojo. You can remember it so vividly if you if you if you watch that episode too. Yung yung sinigawan ni Tepe no na. Natinitingin tingin mo. That was also in that in, in that episode we're in. The final scene was pina inutusan yung pumasok na si Sato ko. Then he, then he himself closed the door in a very disturbing way. Mm-hmm. You remember that episode? Aha, uh-huh, that was that was disturbing. Okay, that was disturbing. Pinalalabas ngayon dito ni Sato ko na kagagawan niya ito. Halatang kagagawan niya ito kasi pag lumabas yung pulang niya matang ganun, that means only one thing. It's going according to her plan. This gear ship will make you realize that. Final gear ship is when Yua is basically amused at what Sato ko has been doing this episode. Natutuwa pa mukhang na to. This gear shift will make you think who is the real enemy here. Is it Satoko or is it Yua? Kasi ang um, frontliner na frontliner na kontrabida dito si Satoko eh. But if you look beyond that, it would be Yua. After all, siya ang nagbigay ng kapangyarihan kay Satoko eh to do all these things. Hmm? So these three gear shifts that I saw Aha. Uh-huh. Yep. They will all play a role. Especially yung the final one. Plotwise. Well, mhm. Malinis. Bakit? If I need to repeat this over and over again, I will do it. If you haven't seen season 1, do not watch season 2. But for those of for those of you who have seen the whole of season 1 congratulations you are getting what I'm saying right now Malinis ang plot because same continuity but from a different point of view you can't call that you can't call that well ironed out or planchado hindi mo masasabing planchado ito because it's the same continuity pero pinalalabas si Sato ko na kagagawan niya lahat ito same continuity but different point of view Malinis pa rin ang plot. Pace, flow, and plot. These three came together for this episode. And wow! Vintage Higurashi ang episode na to. So, 
Higurashi Sotsu Episode 7 Ito ko na makalimutan Isip-isip pa ako Galing nga eh Oh Two thumbs up Season 2 is starting to look better than Season 1 Bakit? A few anime fans who have been fans of this franchise longer than me are slowly saying that the answer arc is here in season 2. Gano ba answer arc ng, ano, ng light novel or yung manga? We mean no, pero it felt like it felt like all our questions from season 1 are being answered here. But for me, you can only hate Satoko. Satoko is the only person you can ever hate in this season. Because She's screwing people over just to keep Rika in Hinamizawa. At ginagawa pa niyang scapegoat si Oyashiro-sama. Palagay ko, mga ka-lifestyle, Oyashiro-sama exists in this anime in two forms. Yuwa and Hanyu. Si Hanyu, yun ang handler ni Rika sa astral world. Siyempre, yung, yung binabalik ang mundo ni ni Rika tuwing pinap tuwing namamatay siya yun kumaga 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 sa online game resp, uh, respawning point <laughs> respawning point at ang handler niya dun ni Rika ay si Hanyo for sato ko ang handler naman niya na nandun sa respawn point niya is Yuwa but I could not erase the fact that Yuwa is the one actually pulling the strings here. Not Satoko. Kumbaga, ginrant lang niya yung wish ni Satoko. And let Satoko use it to, to her heart's content. As long as it amuses her. That's, uh, that's fucking disturbing. You would also ask this question every time Satoko and uh, Yuwa talk to each other. Who's the real villain here? <laughs> Who's the real villain here? Grabe. Imagine, kumbaga, if you have watched the entire season 1, talagang, they, they are turning season 1 over its head in season 2. Talagang, it's, it's a requirement to watch season 1 first of the reboot. That's why I'm, I am always here to tell you this, to tell you this, guys, mga lifestyle, because it is an important. Uh, no, it's compulsory that you watch season one before watching season two. I assure you, guys, hindi nyo may intindihan ng season two kapag hindi nyo napadod ng season one. Ako, I fully get the idea, and I am actually. Um, putting myself in Satoko's shoes for season 2. Talagang, he made the reboot more disturbing si Satoko. So again, Higurashi Sotsu, episode 7. Good job, love. Another two thumbs up for this great season 2. In typical Higurashi fashion, title of the next episode has been teasered part 2 of this mini art <laughs> but let me remind you guys I gave the season 2 pilot the one thumb up but after that it's all two thumbs up Aya, there's a streak there's a um, there's a streak going on for Higurashi Sotsu and for season 2 of the reboot so what are we going to do now well we'll just have to wait for next week and watch that episode ang sarap i-deep dive kaya ng Higurashi <laughs> Tama ba ako, mga lifestyle? In the meantime, enjoy the odd reviews in this digest. Okay? Just watch them. The opening scene found themselves in a... Um, diving into this pool of darkness. Right? And, well... The, the, when you dive into that... Yeah, you float like you're in water. So when it was not gonna stern. Somebody pushed him. He was about to hit the rocks. Nagkamali kasi siya ng, ng talon. He is about to get his head uh, crushed on those rocks. But all of a sudden, the environment changed. So, boy siya. 
And now, looks like Nagara has just found a superpower, his own. So yeah, everyone was trying to um, get him to well, get them to send uh, send them all home. Especially this guy called Ace, his former baseball. Oh, uh, that thing teammate nila ni Cap sa baseball team, who is considered a project a prodigy when it comes to pitching. Cap was telling these stories about a monkey league. Uh, these great players were monkeys, and Ace is claiming that there is a way to see them. It's called the monkey gather, which looks like a pocket flashlight, basically. Now. He challenged uh, Nagara, uh, Nosomi, and uh, I forgot that girl's name. Yung merong uh, power na when she thinks about it, may lalabas. Lalabas yun. Ace challenged these, these three to, a, uh, to one inning. If they could get a hit off of him, they will, he will give them the monkey getter. But if not, Nagara has to transport them back to their own world. What? We all know Nagara as the self-doubter of this sh uh, of this show. Eventually, they lost the bet. But at the moment Nagara is about to strike out, he transports everyone on that playing field to not just one, but two other worlds. So this pissed off Ace and well, Ace basically strikes him out. So the next day, uh, well, everyone was getting ready to get back to their own world. Nagara wasn't able to transport them back to, to this world. But he was able to transport them to other worlds. I think that was about four or five. Well, it pissed off a lot of them. But they were able to get back to the world they know now. Rajdani only had this to say this proves that Nagara's power cannot transport us to our own world but it does transport us to other worlds and these worlds are not of his own choosing so that means one thing Nagara's superpower isn't uh, it's, isn't something that he can control he just thinks of getting out there but not exactly into the world, into uh, into the normal to the normal world. Talaga, well, random, right? He just uh, he just gets transported to random worlds. Final scene, out of the blue, this uh, one of their teachers appears from uh, just na lang from the ocean. Finally, an adult. Her name is Miss Maki. As, as as the students call her. Laka ng kargada. Looks like Alice has competition in this roster when it comes to big boobs. So, well, basically, this, uh, this Maki told everybody that the fun ends today. Oh, hati na terror pa. Looks like business will pick up in this episode, um, in this anime from now on. Overall, it's a fucking good episode. Uh, the stories Cap, uh, Cap has told in this episode, may jo nakakantok, but but uh, the characters keep moving. Uh, that's what, that's uh, that's the relief there. Base. It's unusually slow. Bakit? Because of all the stories Cap has been telling everybody. Yep, that will slow the pace down real good. Then, of course, the matchup, and that's that's the only time the pace picked up. Okay, but they were facing overwhelming odds. Ace is a prodigy pitcher, magaling. Probab na pala itong itong boho na to until this happened. The pace was slow, but don't get me wrong, mga lifestyle. Excuse me. The pace was necessary. Bakit? Because, well, there is a build-up towards the matchup between uh, the three students and Ace. Now, the pace picked up 
when the actual match came. And uh, Nagara, knowing that he can't win against Ace, okay, his baseball skills suck at this point. He just thought of, uh, he just thought that uh, he'll be somewhere. So yon, all of them got transported into another world about twice, and this pissed Ace off. So Ace just ended the match by throwing him a, by throwing him another strike. So strike out. All three of them struck out against Ace. So, yep, Ace won the bet. And, well, unfortunately, Ace got pissed off even more. So, uh, yun nga, na ni Rajdani that Nagara's power isn't uh, the one that you can easily control. You can, you can be, you can be thrown into another world that is not of his own choosing. He can't choose. He can't choose where to go when he wants to warp. But Basim will make you realize that. <laughs> Although slow, yeah, it made me realize that. Flow naman. Well, first gear shift is uh, the opening scene. When Nagara first discovered the superpower. He was he was that close okay, to dying, to losing his own life. And all of a sudden... He's in another world along with the uh, the rest of his classmates. Then he's back there. Nahopulang. There's one use this superpower has. Yun. It saved his life. Second gear shift is when, well, Ace issued that challenge. Looks like Hoshi isn't the only villain here. It's him. An elite athlete known as Ace. So. Uh, yeah, Nagara, Nagara instantly um, counts himself out of this bet, right? And, well, this gear ship actually showed us how weak one of this this main protag is. Yeah, he is <sighs> underdog is an understatement when it comes to Nagara, right? Talagang, uh, he just doesn't have the heart to believe in himself, believe in himself at the slightest. But uh, I'm personally glad. I'm personally glad that he has really good people around him. See, Nosomi, see, si Rashdani, see, si, uh, this the flyer. I forgot his name already. But minsan ay inis narin tong itong kaibigan nila flyer kay kinakare for being so um, um, weak. Yeah, basically weak. Final gear shift is when Nagara just. Thought of uh, places to well, thought that oh well maybe uh maybe if I think it now we might we might have we might go home so yeah isip ibang world isip ibang world isip ibang world so isip ibang world isip ibang world isip ibang world <laughs> it has grown too old for the other students yeah, that they basically gave up and boy it did piss Ace off pero may magandang nangyari doon Rush Dani well, the, the science genius that he is concluded that well Nagara's newfound superpower isn't one that uh, that can't be controlled kasi like, mag-isip siya ng isang lugar na mag-warp no he can't choose all, all Nagara can do is to just wish that he would be out of there. Hilang. <laughs> well, we can also therefore conclude that Nagara's power is useless because of this gear shift. Yeah, na realize natin. These three gear shifts that I saw, it may play a role down the line in this anime. I don't know if you can call that character development, but hopefully it will. Uh, Nagara's character will develop here, power or no power, plot-wise. Malinis, malinis ang plot. Majority of the episode talaga na focus on sa newfound power ni Nagara and Nagara's inability to um to will himself to at least will himself to use it. I 
think Nagara has the lowest self-esteem in this uh, in this anime, right? Although he is one of the main protagonists. <sighs> I don't know, but the pl the plot made me realize that it's that clean. You just have to feel sorry for uh for Nagara here, because yeah, he now has a superpower of his own, but. It's he can't choose where to go. Now this doesn't help his self-esteem a lot. It doesn't help him at all. But pace, flow, and plot, they came together for this episode. And for once, Hoshi is not the villain. But we found out in this episode that Hoshi isn't the only villain in this in this anime. We just found another one. His name is Ace. Uh, judging from what happened in this episode, we out to get Nagara again. Nagara should should, should really shape up mentally because um, it's not looking good for him. But that's my opinion. So, Sonny Boy, episode four. You gotta admit, if you if you watch the episode yourself, there may have been sleeper moments, especially during the parts when Cap was telling these stories about the Monkey League. Some of you may find that uh, sleepers, right? But for me, no, nope. I didn't wink at all when it came to these stories, cause. Baseball is such a great sport. And, uh, I watch Major League Baseball sometimes. Said, well, especially when uh, when my father was still alive. He's such a baseball fan. Uh, I would watch it with him. And to think that monkeys can play baseball. And there was this uh, sequence in wherein Nagara actually saw the death of the of the monkey umpire. And he concluded for himself that the monkey, uh, the one that died that day wasn't the monkey. It was baseball. Because uh, he realized that this umpire was a big fan of baseball. Even though he only had one arm, he tried to sport for himself. But unfortunately, his, well, even humans find it hard to play baseball with one arm. One hand, one foot. Jim Abbott was a um, was born without a I think a right hand, but he did pitch for the Yankees. He actually pitched a no hitter when he played for the Yankees. But those are really rare cases. Now those are well, you can you can say that they were stories of triumph. His story of triumph proves that you don't have to. Uh, you don't have to be missing an arm or a leg just to play your favorite sport. But in this anime, in this anime's case, uh, the monkeys, yeah, this particular monkey found it hard to to even play uh, a full nine innings of baseball. So he chose to to be an umpire instead, and a great umpire. But his uh, him being an umpire cost him his life. Because he stood by the decision that, uh, according to the story, and and to what Nagara actually saw, in for a brief moment, um, he stood by his decision to call it a um, to call this to call it a ball that pissed off the crowd. Kinu yuksha, yun namatay. Kaya nasabi ni Nagara non that. The monkey wasn't the only one that died that day. It was baseball. Probably that was Nagara's motivation to uh, to use his powers right there. Twice. Probably to show Ace that he has no full control over his powers. He doesn't make the choices as to where he's going to go when he wants to warp. You could call it pathetic, but 
you flip it on one side it's actually a dangerous a dangerous power to have if you're the if you're nagara and you found this power um as random as it gets yep that is dangerous paano kung mapunta kayo sa isang mundo na walang oxygen hindi na matay kayo lahat paano kung mapunta kayo sa isang mundo na puro tubig eventually you'll drown yep it's a dangerous power to have and for Nagara to use it yep he is probably getting himself concerned with that deep dive mga ka lifestyle mm. so again Sally Boy episode 4 Like in the previous episodes, no teasers. Okay. Now, this anime has developed quite a style of how it presents its episodes. No OPs, just the ED. Talagang derecha sa storya. I'm beginning to like Madhouse's style for this particular anime. You may call it groundbreaking. Uh, that's the way I, the way I see it. So. Let's just wait. But you know the drill, my lifestyle. Let's just wait for next week and watch that episode. Malay natin, matib dive natin Leon, like like what we just did in this for this episode. So until then, my lifestyle, enjoy the other reviews in this digest. Wala nang wow wow. <laughs> so, surprise! Vanitas was able to rescue Noi from this of uh, these agents of charlatan. This demon-like figure has a name pala. And I completely forgot what it is. But anyway, he was just in time. Eh, dala pala ni Vanitas yung yung book, okay? He has the book. And wow, he he is really prepared to probably take this demon out with the book itself. Siyempre yung mga incantations doon. But, it turned out to be the least of their concerns. Dahil, here come these curse bearers who were rampaging their way. Dumating din si Domi, sinabi niya yung situation. Ang daming curse bearers sa main hall, and nearly all of them are are giving out this weird cry. Well, dinayag daw sa kagad ni Vanitas right there and then. It's a disease called dissonance. Kasi daw, kapag nagkukumpul-kumpul ng mga curse bearer or any vampire with a certain disease, this happens. Pumunta na sila doon and they started curing these vampires. Pero there were some vampires that totally misinterpreted the situation. They are still looking at Vanitas as an enemy. So, well, what does Lloyd do? Oh, pinotect na naman si Vanitas. Then in comes Domi's older sister. See uh, who who is who is called the Queen's Fangs. And for good reason. Ang lakas ng kapangyarihan nito. Naabutan sila. And well basically the Queen's Fangs wants to turn Vanitas into a heap of ice. In comes Lord Rotvin. Yung uncle ni Luca. Wow. He looks both, both respectful and intimidating. <laughs> Nasa Vampire Senate ito. And he really wants to know what happened here. Hinarap siya ni Noy. Noy just... Noy just told the truth. Just the facts. Ayun. Sinabi naman niya na... Sinabi naman ni, ni Rodben. Oh. So I was the one who was ill-mannered. My apologies. Hmm. I'm beginning to like this Lord Rodvin guy. But anyway, he frees Vanitas from his from that icy prison na nilagay sa kanya ng Queen's Fangs. All is well, or so it seems. Nag heart to heart talk si Vanitas at Noy by the Belfry. Unfortunately, hindi natin nakuha ko nung pinag-usapan talaga nila dahil tumulog na yung kampana. Sa lakas ng kampana, walang 
we couldn't we couldn't even get a clue as to what they're talking about. Pero when the sound died down, Noy just said, I'll still be by your side, Manitas. You're quite an interesting human. Manang, something to that effect. And Manitas replied, I couldn't care less. That was the final scene. Vanitas is probably one of the most enigmatic characters in anime right now. Proven again with that with this episode. It's proven that once again. Overall, it's a really good episode. For an aftermath episode. Let's break it down ARD style, all right guys. Pace. The pace actually died down after the first two thirds of the episode ended. And then the first half of the episode and then then for a good five minutes naging slow on pace Noi had a dream sequence here he was talking to his uh, to his mentor na lolo lolo nila nila Louie at Louie at Domi and uh, sinabi niya am I failing? but his teacher just said all you need to do to assess the book of Vanitas is to learn through its betters. You guys get what I'm saying? Kumbaga, wag mo munang, wag mo munang, i, wag mo munang iharap kay Vanitas ang mga ideals mo. If you really want to know how powerful the book is, ask Vanitas himself. Parang ganun lang yan. Parang ganun lang yung sinasabi ng, ng, ng mentor niya sa kanya. Then, all of a sudden, he wakes up. Ayun, that's when, that's when the final scene actually started. Nung pinunta niya si Vanita sa Belfry. The pacing of this episode will really make you realize how enigmatic a character Vanitas is. Hindi siya makwento. Hindi siya mapagsabi ng hinaing. And I'm sure as hell, he's not into divulging the book's secrets that easily sa pinagkatiwala yata sa kanya ito, sa kanya ito ng original na Vanitas. He's got that large target on his back so he better make the ones aiming for it have a difficult time. Hindi ba the same mga lifestyle? And the pacing made me realize that. The pacing of this episode is close to impeccable. Bakit close to impeccable? Kasi... If you did not watch this episode from start to finish, hindi nyo magigets ang plot. You really have to, you really have to open your eyes to this episode and just watch, if not understand it. Ganon lang yon. Flow naman. First gear shift is when Domi steps in to to um to give to give the to give the two main protags a heads up of, of what's happening around them sinabi niya yun nga ang daming curse bearers sa main hall and they're giving out this weird cry if a vampire like Dobby finds that finds that mass cry weird yup there is something wrong <laughs> paniniwalaan siya kagad nila Vanitas at Noy oh, takbo na sila dun now why did I call this a gear ship? because at that moment, sinabi ng ng itong ng demonyong ito ng charlatan na it's taking a liking to Noi. This is proven itself that it will be back for Noi. I'm 99% sure na its favorite target is now Noi. A great opportunity now for Vanitas to truly showcase the book. Here's his chance to Here's his chance to kill an actual agent of charlatan. Talagang demonyo. Second gear shift is when Vanitas kills this curse bearer child na hindi, hindi, hindi na siya talagang mukhang tao eh. Or even vampire. Talagang halimaw na ang itsura. Vanitas concluded right there and then na this is, she's beyond saving na. Pero nagmamakaawa na rin yung batang yun. Yung batang yun. Patayin nyo na lang ako. Please kill me. So, yep. Vanitas obliged. He used the book to turn that lost cause 
into ashes. Talaga naging abo. Ang ginawa lang ni Vanitas noon was to identify that vampire's true name. Yun lang. Nung nalaman niya, yun, naging abo na. Wow, it's that it's that dangerous. Okay. It is that dangerous. Kaya pinag-iingatan lahat ng vampire na na talagang itago nila ng husto ang kanilang tunay na pangalan, their true name. Because once anybody, vampires or no vampires, finds out their true name, baka gano'n ang mangyari sa kanila. Baka mag abunin sila. Kumbaga, yung ginawa niya rito sa batang ito, kung mag, he sort of euthanized the child. Minersi killing na niya kasi talagang wala na eh. It's beyond saving. Kung pababayaan naman nilang gumala ito, maraming mapapatay na vampire to. For me, Vanitas made the right move there. Final gearship is when Lord Rothven stepped in. We've been hearing his name since episode 3. And, but this was only his first appearance. Tumigil na ang Queen Spanx eh, nung pinigilan siya ng, nung nirestrain lang siyang gano'n ni, ni Rothven. Talagang, talaga tumigil siya. A vampire that powerful, stopping only when Lord Rothven tell, told her to, that means something. Talagang, person in extreme authority, itong si, itong si Rothven. What does this gearship tell us? Probably there's probably even um Rodven, the way I see it, is neither it's neither friend nor foe. Alahan niyo. He is a member of of the Senate. So politico ito. He has his own interests. Baka ganun. So, but for now, he's taken Vanitas and Noy in as his guests. And as they say in the anime, when you're taken in by Lord Rothven as his guest, you better know your place. And as the ones who are, um, if you're, if you're a guest of this and you got enemies, your enemies better back off. Parang ganun lang yan eh. Ganun ang dating yan. Ganong ganong ka intimidating siguro na politiko ito si si Rothven. These three gear shifts, they will all play a role in the second half of this anime's run. Tandaan nyo, episode 6 na. So, tapos na tayo sa first half ng run ng anime na to. If an event, if a, if a, if a, if a scene there is somewhat inexplicable or dumbfounded, you can probably go back to this episode and one of these gear shifts. I, I, I can't say it's crucial, but they will play they will play a role down the line. So plot wise, a plot. Yeah, plot. <laughs> plot na nga pala. Malinis. Excuse me. Because this episode is following one strange continuity. Strange enough. Dahil Ang dami sumingit. The Queen of Fangs, si, si Rothven, and, uh, no, not, well, those two are, those two are big enough to handle already. Kaya, marami, okay? Those two are, those two are too many enough. It's a really good continuity to, um, to see in this episode. Dahil, Vanitas has, has um, wasn't able to finish his uh, his mission to to save these to save these curse bearers. Many euthanized pa siyang isa. Then the queen's fans stepped in to uh, well to well you can say a show of arrogance. The plot was that clean. Because if you're a season anime fan like me, you would see those you would see those deep dives right away. You would see those deep dives right away. Kaya, nasabi ko na malinis ang plot ng episode na to. I, I, I saw those, I saw those, um, those deep dives pretty, pretty quickly. Unang tingin ko pa lang sa mga eksena nito, there's a deep dive that needs to be, uh, that needs to be explored. Uh, sinabi ko, 
that the plot of this episode is really clean. Pace, flow, and plot, they all work together for this episode. Which gave us another good episode from this anime. And what a good, and it's quite, it's quite a modest to end the first half of this anime's run. There were some unanswered questions here, like, when will, when will Charlatan, when will Charlatan be back for Noi? And what are Rotven's true intentions with the two? See, you know you have Sivanitas. Especially Sivanitas. And when will the Queen Spanx have her way with Vanitas? Because number one, he is human. Number two, he's a member of the clan of the Blue Moon. He she even accused Vanitas of turning all their guests into course bearers when he showed his mark. Yun, yun ang proof na members ng clan na yun. Ta- talagang kayabangan lang umiral dito. Right? It's just, it's just, uh, the Queen's Fangs is just uh, being fueled by arrogance. At nakita agad ni, ni Lord Rotven yun. So, the case study of Vanitas episode 6 Okay then. Mm. Two thumbs up. Excuse me. I was watching this episode while eating this. <laughs> Sisig. It really um it really spiced up my uh spiced up my review of this episode. But anyway, we're now done. With the with the first half of this anime's run, so you can clearly um, ask yourselves, what does the second half have in store for us? Like I um, mentioned a while ago, there were there were questions left unanswered after this episode. Nabanggit ko na kanina, but one question remains unanswered even from even from the pilot medyo tinatanong ko na to ano ba talaga ang intent ni Vanitas sa sa book sa book of Vanitas what will he gain out of all of this what's this guy's deal ano ba talaga ang balak ng Vanitas na to sa Sa huli. Yeah, yeah, he, 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 he does save vampires. And he's really good at it. But he's also good at euthanizing them. Just like uh, what he did here with this child na talagang beyond saving na. Talagang, talagang halimaw na ang itsura. At nagpapatay na talaga kay Vanitas. So, you just gotta ask those questions. Vanitas is the most probably the most enigmatic character right now this anime season no character I think is more enigmatic than Vanitas <coughs> well at least not in this not anyone else in this roster you would really you would really raise questions about his personality uh, not, not personality his motives, mm. his goals, his well. Does he have a secret mission? Pwede. Pwede mo rin tanongin yan. All we need to do right now to answer those questions is to is to wait for the second half of the run to start next week. tayo. So again, the case study of Vanitas episode six. Thumbs up. Another two thumbs up for this anime Valentine's time. Title of the next episode has been teasered. But anyway, we'll just have to wait for next week and watch that episode. In the meantime, mga lifestyle, enjoy the other reviews in this digest. Okay?
quite an interesting episode. They were just trying to review what they have, uh, what they have done, what they know now about the enemy. Arto says that uh, the name of the organization they're up against is known as the Church. Hacker din ito eh, si, uh, si Arto, and he has access to the dark web. <laughs> Every gang that stood up to it is now gone. Napal si ni Ryuhei. Oh ano? Wala na ako narinig na mga nabalita sa mga ibang gang eh. Ito palang dahilan. Now, these uh, dream drugs that they that these victims have been taking, they're actually called solmium drops. Ginagawa ito ng church para, kung yan, in case na meron silang masagap na na tingin nila eh, kailangan ito, bibigyan nila. There is no financial transactions about this drug. Wala. Talagang, uh, siguro, lumalabas na talagang binibigay, ni, binibigay ng church ito ng libre. The church is giving this to victims for free. Now, its latest victim, the brother of the of the latest rape murder victim na is now making national headlines. Consumed by revenge, yes. Anger, yes. Sadness, yes. He decides to take that drug. So, well, um, uh, Ryuhei and Ryuhei and the other knocker ops tried to stop him, pero it was all too late. Talagang he offered up a switch and he becomes a weird. He was now set out to to uh, to, to to kill uh, his sister's killer, pero kinakausong na kasi ni Ryuhei. Ayo pa rin makinig. Well, Ryuhei had no choice but to stop him. One punch downs the guy. Ito namang unfortunately this this kid was beyond safe because na offer because when you offer up your wish if you get killed by a knocker up, yes, you are dead. So, namatay nga yung namatay nga yung namatay nga yung binata with this mark of that's it's it's the mark actually of the church. Eh, nang ngayon, final scene. Ito nang ito gusto niyang patayin so naka naka nakawala na sa ano, wala nang posas. He's gloating as to how he's going to get out of prison. Babanatan na siya ni, ni Ryuhei until boom. The vehicle he um he was in Catches fire, nadamay siya. Patay! Patay ito. Patay yung kriminal. And we just see um, the kid weeping. So, it's a good indication that he's still alive. Overall, it's a fucking good episode. May life lesson dito, mamaya. Pace! They're practically in a race against time because Jessica feels that They've been behind in the information part of this war. Pinaigting na niya yung search kay Aruto. Okay, pinaigting na niya kay Aruto yung uh, searching for whatever information they can get so that they can get a heads up on the church. Ayun nga, nakita. Nakita niya yung next pro- na- nahula na niya yung next probable victim ng church. Ayun, yung kapatid nga ng yung ng pinatay na babae. Rape murder yun. He was all, all he wants was to exact revenge on his sister's killer. And he was almost successful. The pace actually picked up nung... When the kid... When, when that... Uh, when that kid took the drug. Yung, yung drop. Okay? When he actually ate the second drop. Kasi dalawa yung binigay sa kanya. Una was to... Um, was to make him dream about killing his sister's killer. Talagang pagigantihan niya. Tapos uh, he was he was actually hearing voices. Sinasabi sa kanya na take the other drop and prove it na magag na magagawa mo. So he took the second he took the second drop. Ayun. Na kumpleto na. That triggered the porthole. So sina so this means only one thing to to the knocker ops. 
Meron silang mission. <laughs> and they went, ayun, nakita nila yung... He's now... Uh, siya yung dreamer dito. So, yun nga, nakita nila. The pace will make you realize that. The pacing of this episode kasi was... It's really good. Especially, uh, they, they made those... Sequen- those scenes involving this dreamer na yeah they made it really disturbing because they're trying to impart to us that taking this this drug it will have disturbing consequences yeah it's another disturbing sequence I gotta tell you guys the plot uh, the pacing of this episode galing flow naman first gear ship was was when Aruto started researching on the dark web. Yeah, nakita niya. Uy, ano to? So, ang next probable, vic- probable victim niya ay ito. Okay. So, nag-report na siya sa... Nag-report na siya sa iba. Yung pinakita yung info niya. Pinakita lang niya yung marka ng the, the church. Na-recognize kagad ni Ryuhei. He simply froze, then broke down a bit. Dinijus din ni Jessica na probably probably your brother is involved with the church. Oh, Ryuhei stops her there. Sabi sinabi naman ni Eri, yung si yung goth girl, sinabi ni ni Eri. Baka meron siyang nalalaman tungkol sa kalabang ito. Kaya siya pina kaya siya siguro pinaligpit. Pwede. That's that's the more that's the more sensible explanation you can give to Ryu at that point. May nalalaman na kapatid niya tungkol sa sa organization na to. Kaya sa pina kaya sa siguro pinatumba. Then final gear shift is when the dreamer offered up his wish. Ayun, naging weird. Why did I call this a gear shift? Because every time a dreamer becomes a weird it spills onto the real world. So, making things more complicated for the knocker-ups to... Uh, yeah, na- nagiging problemado ng mga knocker-ups on how to... on how to save the dreamer now. Kasi, weird ne. There's a slim chance na babubu... na, 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 na mababawi nila ang, vi- ang biktimang ito. So, right now, in this... Hindi... Uh, in this anime, the knocker-ups are 0 and 3. 2 and 3 pala against these against the church. Because they've they've lost three victims already. Una, yung nung pilot. Nung naging knocker up si Ryuhei. Pangalawa, yung naging dot na dreamer. Yung, he just wanted to disappear. That was just last that was just last week. Ngayon ito, pangatlo. They weren't able to save. So, just goes to show you that the knockers are having a hard time against the church, and this gear ship proves it. The enemy is uh, the enemy is one step ahead. Oh, not just one, at least three steps ahead of them. If you're the heroes, you, you, you really need, you really need to do some catching up. Kung hindi, na naman ito. I bet you guys, this is the mindset right now of the knocker ups. That gear ship made me realize that. Deep dive. These three gear ships that I saw, they will play a role down the line in this anime. Especially the last one. Because, pangatlo victim na ito na hindi nila na isalba. What are you gonna do now, Knocker Ops? The only, the only way, they should gather more information, even possibly send, uh, send a spy into their organization. Yun, yun, risky yun. Sino naman na padadala mo dun? Without actually um, stabbing you in the back later on. You feel me mga ka-lifestyle? You feel me what, what the knocker-ups uh, what, what kind of situation the knocker-ups are in after this episode? You can only guess. Plot-wise. Yeah, malinis. You know, the way they illustrate how or on what victims go through when they uh, uh, before taking that drug 
that sonium drop it is disturbing so well it looks disturbing to them so they are uh, talagang nakukonvince sila na i-take yung drop na yun and just dream their lives away pero sa case na ito yung lalaki binigyan ng dalawang drops binigyan ng dalawang drops probably they were they were gauging as to how much on how badly he wants revenge on his uh, he wants revenge for his sister talagang gusto niya talag, gusto niya talaga gantihan ang ang demonyong kriminal na ito if you actually saw the episode the news that was being flashed yung, yung napanood ng mga knocker ups talaga sinabi the accused was unapologetic sinabi pa pag nakalabas ako uulitin ko lang ito I guess karma was a bitch in this episode bigla na lang bigla na lang sumilab yung 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 sasakyan nagda, magdadala sa kanya sa kulungan biglang ano eh tumulo kasi ang fuel so pero nag spark na loose wiring ayun pa sumi wow uh, it it burned him alive the plot made me realize that <laughs> although it had disturbing turns it really makes you think that is revenge necessary is kailangan talaga magiganti para matapos ang ito so it really makes you think okay? there's a life lesson there mamaya ano yun natin excuse me so pace flow and plot I almost did not dis- I almost wasn't able to distinguish the pace and the plot from one another okay? it's the episode was that fucking good talagang my eyes were glued to the story and wow they tackled another social issue here Vigilantism. Now, uh, mamaya. So, decide to comedy the animation episode 5. Isip pe. Oh, two thumbs up. Ano kaganda? Now, the deep dive. This episode will show you how, well, how bad drug addiction is, okay? Although, the somnium drop is a uh, is a fictional drug, but you, you probably got you probably get the picture. You do not need in this episode. You do not need drugs to exact revenge. If you're the defendant and the plaintiff is still gloating about what he did, you can hold that against him in court. Sa mga pinagsasabi, dagdag mo kaso or well, like I said a while ago, you do not need drugs to get even with someone. The more extreme solution would be this. Hire an assassin to kill him. <laughs> Lalo kung ganito ka halang ang bituka. Vigilantism isn't, uh, isn't, the, isn't the final solution. It, it is not the be-all, end-all. You can even... Well, if there's anything else that this episode proves that... Well, here it is. Karma is a bitch. You see what happened to that uh, to that criminal? You see what happened? Out of the blue, he got burned alive. <laughs> Just goes to show you that you attract, you attract, you 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 do bad things, you attract bad things. Ganon lang yan. It's universal law. Kaya, kaya sila sabi ng ng common folk or uh, most of us karma is a bitch and this episode clearly showed us clearly showed us all why <laughs> so again decide tromery the animation episode 5 two thumbs up Next episode has been teasered, and I think yeah, I think this is going to be another complicated case. Though that that's the way I see it, pero I don't trust it anyway. Kaya you know the drill, mga lifestyle. Wait for next week, 
and watch that episode. Pare natin. May deep dive factor din yung episode na yun, just like this one. You can never tell. So in the meantime, enjoy the other reviews in this digest. Bottom line of this episode is Takemichi needed to do some backdoor negotiations para lang hindi matuloy ang 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 patayang ito. Of course, he first went to 2017 Draken again. Sinabi mismo ni Draken, you were there Takemichi when uh, when Mikey killed Katsutora. Wow. <laughs> What's confusing to Takemichi is because this is yet to happen. Pa- paano ko? Paano ko nagkaroon ng paano ko nagkakaroon ng memories lang ganito? Uh, memories so vivid that it like it just happened yesterday. Uh, that's a little bit creepy. But anyway, ang mission nila ngayon, nila ni Naoto, is to save Baji. Para hindi uh, so, well, so that Mikey won't lose it and kill Kasutora in the process. Y- yun, ang did- yun ang deduction nila rito. So, balik sa, balik sa 2006 uri si Mikey. Then, um, he, some backdoor negotiations going on. Una, Draken, uh, nakipag-usap kay Kasutora. Kasutora said, no, tuloy pa rin to. I am going to kill Mikey. Then, Takimichi at si Matsuno kinontak si Baji. Ang talaga nag-usap dito, si Baji at si Takimichi. Yeah. Pinunguna na sa ni, ni Baji, I got nothing to say to you. Eh, sabi naman, sabi naman ni Takimichi, please don't die. So, nagtaka si, nagtaka si Baji and he just left. One thing is for sure, the blood Halloween will push through. And both Baji and Katsutora well, practically guaranteed that they will kill Mikey in this fight. So, dumating na yung araw. May, magre-re- may magre-reverie sana. The leader of uh, another gang called ICBM. Okay, so, para medyo, para medyo. Patas pa rin yung, yung magiging patayan. But, Kasutoro wanted nothing of that. Ginulpi yung referee. Boom! The fight started. That's the final scene. <laughs> ganun lang kadali, ganun lang kadali i- i- run down ang ang episode na to. Because to tell you honestly, guys, time went by me so fast in this episode. Uh, na nalaman ko. Uy, ano to? Mga papatay na sila. Umpisa na Blood Halloween. Overall, it's another fucking good episode from this anime. Woo! Grabe Tokyo Revengers! Pace! Well, it's understandable because Takenichi basically has 48 hours to convince Baji to come back to Toman. Eh, eh, para, no, eh, uh, to save face to Mikey, pero eventually, sinabi niya kay Mikey na, I'm sorry I could not bring Baji back to Toman. Well, sinabi naman ni Mikey, there's nothing you can do. Eh, kung talagang, kung talagang, Nilaglag na tayo ni Baji. So be it. But, the pacing of the episode will make you understand that, well, gang politics can be this complicated. Even gangs resort to backdoor negotiations. Hindi lang yung mga mainstream politicians. The pacing will make you realize this. Ako, na-realize ko yun. But, the pacing was slow enough to make you to make you become familiar with these things. Pumigap lang ang pace nung, fi- nung medyo final scene na. Ayan. Uh, mag-umpisa na ang, tina- ang tinaguri ang Blood Halloween. No turning back na between Toman and Valhalla. Talagang ubusan sila rito. Mag-uubusan na talaga sila. Flow naman. First gear shift is when Draken mix up with Kasutora. At sinabing, sinabi niya mismo kay Kasutora, Mikey does not want this. Sinabi pa rin ng Kasutora, tuloy pa rin. Tuloy pa rin two days from now. Tinatanong din sa kanya ni, ni Jaken kung bakit 
Siya pa ang may galit kay Mikey. Alam naman ang lahat na siya ang pumatay sa kapatid ni Mikey. Siya ang humato sa ulo. We all saw that episode. It was rather hard to watch. At basta sinabi lang ni Kasutora, it's still going down. Papatayin ko si Mikey. What this gearship told me was, Kasutora is this crazy. It will make you feel glad that he's out of Toman. Having a psychotic dickhead like this in your gang, ito sigurado ang, mag, ang magpapadala sa inyo sa gulo. Kahit saan kayo magpunta, kahit anong oras. Second gear shift is when nakipag-usap sila Takimichi at Matsuno kay Baji. On, a, on an elevated flyover of all things. Ang point lang dito ni Takimichi is for Baji to stay alive during the fight. Pero Baji made it clear that he is going to kill Mikey. Final gear shift is when Kasutora beats the shit out of the referee. Talagang, they prefer no, Va- Valhalla. Uh, Valha- from Valhalla's point of view, more likely, they want, uh, they want no rules for this fight. Mamatay na ang mamatay. Boom. The fight begins. Ayun. Mag- uh, along with Siguro, in front of uh, other gangs na nandun, na mag observe lang. I don't know kung... We basically have no idea how, Val, how far Valhalla will go just to become the number one gang in Tokyo. Idadamay din ba nila mga nanonood na gang? Or they will just stick to Toman and beat the shit out of them? Or make them go extinct? For that matter, everything is up in the air until the next episode. I said, "Don't be nitty." You know, another thing that the pacing made me realize is, oh, the episode's over. I don't know. Wong yun naman ibig, wong yun kami bitin. Ganon ang feeling ko eh kanina. So it was paced well enough, and the gear shifts will make you talagang will make you lose track of time. It, well, it made me lose track of time. <laughs> These three gear shifts, of course, will play a role more likely in the next episode, all of them. But for the, the final gear shift, that will have repercussions in, the, uh, in these last few remaining episodes of this anime. Probably, Takinichi and Naoto will will go back to this um to this incident called the Blood Halloween on how their case is transpiring. You get what I'm saying, Michael Lifestyle? Plot wise, Malinis. It was so clean, it made me lose track of time. Hmm? You feel me, Michael Lifestyle? You were your your both your eyes and your brain will be focused on will be so focused on this episode lana sa tatlong gear shifts na, 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 na nakita ko rito although it's slow the pacing then it became fast all of a sudden during the final scene the plot will make you realize all of that but rarely do we see an anime episode this fucking good Pace, flow, and plot, I had a hard time telling one from the other. But, the episode was so fucking good, it made me lose track of time. Nalaman ko, ha? Tapos na? Agad? Bitin naman! <laughs> but, pero, bitin in, an, in a really nice way, mga kalaysa. Because, this is probably the most, um, probably the most iconic scene uh, the most iconic yeah, scene in the manga. So probably Leiden Films is reserving the actual the actual battle between Toman and Valhalla for another episode. Baka, baka kula, kukulangin nga naman eh. <laughs> baka kulangin eh. Kung, kung ilalagay mo lahat yun sa, in this episode alone. At saka baka, eh, but, baka hindi naman maintindihan ng mga bago manonood ng, ng anime na to. On what on what is actually going on. So, Lightning Kills made a good call by 
cutting the episode right there. Yung mag, na, nagsuguran na. Moments after Kasutora beat the shit out of this referee, para wala ka. No rules. Tanginan nyo. Gusto namin kayo patayin eh. Gusto namin kayo tumba. Ngayon na. Ganun na sinasabi ng, uh, ng, 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 ng Valhalla sa Toman. When Kasutora uh, wow, beat this referee senseless. Dami. <laughs> so, Tokyo Revengers Episode 18. Isip pa. Lupit nga eh. Oh, two thumbs up. Ako na nagsasabi sa inyo. This episode deserves more than a two thumbs up. Ang baba na tanahan to, man, at balhala eh. Tapos bigla tayong binitin. Ano lang eh. Yung sakto lang. Okay? Yung pagkakabitin ng F, ng XN lang yun. So, wow. All I can say after my rating is this, mga kalaistan. I cannot fucking wait for the next one. Eh, ang Tokyo Revengers hindi nag... Hindi nag-dictation ng susunod na episode. But based on the final scene, ano, papanoorin ba natin o hindi? <laughs> so again, Tokyo Revengers episode 18. Mm, two thumbs up. Another two thumbs up for this anime Malamai style. Like I said a while ago, in typical Revengers fashion, no teasers. So, who's excited about the Blood Halloween? The actual Blood Halloween. Ako excited ako. Ewan ko sa e- ko kayo. <laughs> But, until then mga ka-lifestyle, keep on watching the reviews on this uh, on this digest. Alright? Watch those other reviews. Hmm. Binigyan ng secret mission ang ang art team. So dala-dala nila yung tatlong yung tatlong getter. What's that? The Mariana Trench? Uh, is that is it that deep? Parang ganoon eh. Pero uh, ang ginamit nila ng getter dito yung kay yung kay Baku. Si si Getter Khan. You may you may you may dalaw malaking gulong dito sa balikat na ganun. And may secondary form kasi siya. Kumaga Getter Khan can wrap himself up into a a nightmare wheel. <laughs> It's the type of wheel that you would um that you would um uh, use in a torture chamber. Para ganon na yura niya. Mako torture wheel. Eh. It looks really looks like a torture wheel. So they explore this. You know, then while all this while they were doing this, the UN forces. We're assigned to protect the protect the Sotomi Lab. Who steps in to to help them out? Si Sho Tachibana. Yan. One of the alternate pilots from Get a Robo G. Yan. Siya ang pumalit kay Hayato nung na injured to. So that was during the finale of Get a Robo G. Siya ang nagpilot sa yung sa Dream na Getter. Yung babae yun. So. She now heads the these UN forces in uh, that were assigned to protect the Sotome Lab while while the Getter Art team is away on this secret mission. So, ano line of defense nila? The UN forces and yung natitirang Getter dito. Yun lang. So they they come face to face with this super the, the, this this humongous enemy robot na pinagkumpul-kumpulan ng mga malilit na versions na, na sarili niya. They, they bust themselves together into this one humongous monster. And the one fueling them is this yin-yang wheel. Yeah, it looks like the yin-yang symbol. That's their fuel source. The, the Saltome Lab is about to get run over by this monster when all of a sudden, Shin Getter appears. Woo! One of the OG getters. So, in a show that Hayato, that Ryoma, si Go, and si Tahir, yung kapatid ni Bako, yung kuya ni Bako, they are still alive in that. Wow. Okay. Inside Shin Getter, talagang 
uh, na feel ni Hayato that this was Shin Getter. It took out the entire the entire enemy army. Isang ano lang yung ano yung ano yung ano niya, yung killer move niya. I forgot that. Ginamit niya rito. Shin Getter nuked the entire enemy army. But as quickly as the enemy army enemy army got disintegrated, nawala rin si Shin Getter. Now, Hayato deduced, uh, made another deduction that everyone and everything connected to Getter Dragon, they're slowly making an appearance. Ayan. Si Shin Getter, lumito from out of nowhere. <laughs> the one, uh, the one team Hayato thought of was dead, biglang lumitaw para tulungan sila. Fan service! <laughs> Final scene. While all this was going on, the art team was able to reach their objective. Ang mission pala nila rito, doon lang, doon lang nila nalaman, especially si Kamui, was to contact the Dinosaur Empire. Siguro, Hihingi ng tulong si Hayato sa kanila. After all, their prince is one of the pilots of... Uh, is, is a member of the Getter Art Team, si Kamui. He's considered a prince in the Dinosaur Empire kasi ang anak nga ng dating emperador ito. Wow! The Andromeda acceleration will stop at nothing to, to completely eradicate the Getter race. Wow! The way I see it, this will be a major... Well, a crucial episode of that. Dahil, well, malapit na tayo sa second half ng run ng Ghetto Robo Arc. Overall, it is a fucking good episode. Wow! Woo! And the fan service moment of that. Shit Getter is back! Pace muna. I cannot say that there's a, um, that the pacing in this episode was slow. Nope, it's far from it. Pwede natin describe as moderate to fast. Moderate is yung kinikerry on na ng, ng get ng art team yung mission na binigay sa kanila ni Hayato. Yun pala ang objective ng mission nila. To get in contact with the Dinosaur Empire. This takes back to the original Get the Robo series. Na yun, yun, ang, yun ang kalaban nila, the Dinosaur Empire. Wow! Talaga na sinasabi ko sa inyo. Two fan service moments here because of the pacing of this episode. Unang una sa lahat, yun. They're about to get in contact. They're about to re-establish contact with the Dinosaur Empire. Who has been, let's say, on hiatus. Their only representative is Kamui right now. Because he is the prince. He is a prince. And second fan service moment is of course, Shin Getter making an appearance. I've only seen the finale of, of Shin Geta Robo. I haven't completely seen the um the entire series yet. Pero trust me, mga lifestyle. Papa no ringo yun. <laughs> Papa no ringo yun. The pacing has made me realize this. Kasi, I think Geta Dragon. Here's what the pacing also made me realize. Geta Dragon is now asking help from probably. Probably from from getters of different uh, ages, of different uh, generations. Kung baga, uh, ang, well, ang unang yung tinawag dito, obviously, if, kung, kung si Getter Dragon nga ang nagtawag dito, was she Getter. Okay? The team, like I said a while ago, the team Hayato thought of as already dead. They're back from the grave to help them. At boom boom pa si Shin Getter. In all its full fury. Wow! The Andromeda acceleration may get a run for its money. Pag lumitaw uli si Shin Getter. Especially a Shin Getter on steroids. <laughs> Woo! Grabe! So, the pacing made me realize that. Gather Dragon is, has become a, a very enigmatic um, 
Mecca because of its of its, of its overexposure basically to the getter rays. And it brought well uh an an OG crew member with it. I forgot its name. Oh, sa dami naman naging getter pilot. I I can I tend to forget their names. If Getter Dragon has this ability to to contact different getters from I don't know. Uh maybe we can assume na through the time space continuum or even from uh, or even getters from another reality? Who knows? Kasi hindi pa tapos ang research actually on getter race. Ang nagko-continue pa lang nito si Hayato mismo. Everything is up in the air. Let's assume that everything is possible. <laughs> And it's all good for us getter robo fans. Flow naman. What first gear shift is when the art team backtracked a little bit to to when they were first briefed to this mission. Ayun. Nagpakita na si si Sho. Uh, the the alternate the alternate getter pilot who now commands this part of the UN naval forces. So, ayan nakita nila nakita nila nakita uli sila ni Hayato. Hey, these are these are the OG getter pilots, all right? These are the OG getter pilots. Uh, reuniting, na reunion of sorts. Pinrief nila ngayon yung tatlong getter pilots. So, ito gagawin niyo. Punta niyo tong coordinates na to at huwag kayong titigil siguro. That's that's high out of mentality, right? Do not stop for anything. Susunod sila. And muntik na nga nilang i-assume as hostile yung mga dinosaur-like creatures na sumalubong sa kanila. Kamoy said, no. Do not do not engage. Sundan lang natin sila. That's a gear shift. Alam niyo kung bakit? If they are successful in um, forging an alliance with the dinosaur empire, it's practically game over for the Andromeda Celebration. Dahil malakas na kalaban ang dinosaur empire. You don't trust what I'm saying? Watch the original Gator Robo series. Para malaman niyo para mag-guess yo sinasabi ko ngayon. Second gear shift is when well, the Andromeda Celebration relaunched another attack. Uh, launch another attack. Ito nga yung yung mga mali, yung mga maliliit na robot na ganoon na nagkumpul-kumpul to form this humongous cyber monster. <laughs> I go, uh, it does look like a robot but it's not insectoid in form nor it's not even humanoid. Talagang robot ang itsura. So, uh, how do you want me to call it that? Nagtaka ngayon yung yung mga getter dito at saka yung mga yung mga mecha from the UN. Well, let, uh, before I continue, I saw a Gundam reference here. Yung tatlong UN mecha, they can turn into planes. <laughs> so, consider that a Gundam reference. Now, so naki, no, nakita nila, ano to? E, apat lang kami. Paano namin sasagupain to? So, doon pa lang, They, they may not be outnumbered but they are outmatched here. Ang laki ng kalaban eh. Kailangan nila talaga si Getter Arc dito. So, why did I call it the gear shift? Kasi, if you remember from the opening scene of this episode, yung isa pa lang tauhan ng, ng Queen ng Andromeda Celebration, dati pa lang tauhan ng Emperor Brighto. Dati pala niyang tauhan nito si McDonald. Now, Emperor Bry led uh, uh, led the alien the alien another alien empire that uh, that the getters became enemies with. Uh, I forgot I forgot the name. This sparked the events of Getter Robo G. Yung sumunod sa kumbaga, yeah, yung sumunod sa unang Geta Robo. Ito ang nakalaban nila nun. This McDonald guy is one of Emperor Bryce's men. Kumaga, siguro mga officer to. Now, oh, sabi ng asama niya, it's time to exact revenge, McDonald. Then, nagpakita na, putang inang. Ito yung nakalaban nila sa Geta Robo G. Itong empire na to. And, 
it's obvious he has an axe to grind against the getters because getter G was the one who killed Emperor Bry siyang tumapo sa empire nila darkest fan service moment I've, I've ever seen for me the final gear shift here was when the getter team finally makes contact with the dinosaur empire no uh, when the camera panned to those uh, those ver those all too familiar um, fortresses the dinosaur empire has sabi ko nakoputa pinakokontak sa kanilang dinosaur empire grabe you know what these three gear shifts that I saw made me uh, made me figure it, it made me figure out something this is probably the this is probably the most fan service the most fan friendly episode of this anime <laughs> I consider the last one a gear shift is because well probably start of something new between the humans and the Saurians I say that's the way I see it kaya pala kaya sila siguro pinapunta ni Hayato doon para makipag-usap sa Dinosaur Empire siguro I think he's offering an alliance with them after all Kamui is one of the pilots of Getter Ark so you can say that Hayato has that leverage now has that political leverage it's the way I see it once the Dinosaur Empire and the Getters agree to an alliance this will probably be game over for for the Andromeda Stellaration I tell you guys if you've seen the original Getter Robo series talaga nahirapan sila rito sa Dinosaur Empire nahirapan sila rito mabuti na lang Getter has the ability to to merge into three different robots kaya kung ano man ang kung ano ang terrain na nakasalayan ng kalabang robot Getter will just adapt Getter will just adapt eventually they they will take that they will take that enemy robot out ganun lang yun <laughs> pero on top of that talaga nahirapan sila nun sila sila Ryoma sila Hayato mm, talaga nahirapan sila nun against the dinosaur empire matinding kalaban ang dinosaur empire so to have them as an ally, I think Hayato's making the right move here. So all three of those gear shifts, especially the, the last two, yep. The way I see it, we can we can backtrack to this episode what what will happen on what will for what will for what's going to happen in the remaining episodes of this anime next week is the midway point of the run episode 7 so after that second half of the run na. <laughs> business has just picked up as early as in this episode e bilhin nyo ba naman Shin Getter appears out of nowhere just to assist the South Tommy, just to protect the South Tommy lab and well giving Hayato that reassurance that his former comrades are still alive. Andito, andito lang sila sa Shin Getter. Hindi sila umaalis. So, wow. Right? Simply wow. <laughs> Plot-wise, malinis. Hindi mo na masasabi yung planchado eh because it still follows the same continuity of the, um, of the, of the Arting's mission. Pinapakita lang sa atin kung ano yung mga, nang, yung mga nangyayari while they were doing this mission. And it's a really exciting plot, alright? I tell you, it's a really exciting and fan-friendly plot. I saw three fan service moments in this episode alone. Ah, four pala! Four! Including the, including the Gundam reference there. Kaya, taste, flow, and plot they all came together for this episode. Galing! Ken Ishikawa, God bless your soul. <laughs> so, Get the Robo Arc, Episode 6. Two thumbs up. Hindi ko na patatagalin yung, yung deep dive ko rito. 
Anong deep dive, deep dive? Everything has been laid out in this episode. <laughs> Except the one that... Well, that's the one that we're... We, we tend to speculate kasi it's yet to happen. Kasi makikipag-contact pa lang ang Getter Team sa Dinosaur Empire. So, everything is still up in the air. Either the Dinosaur Empire welcomes them with open arms or they start shoot or they start shooting at the getters can go either way I don't think that um, Kamui's father the, the former emperor is still alive bagong emperor na to eh we don't know what his um, what his mindset is against humans much less the getters or I don't know I don't know. So, we'll just have to wait for the next episode to to either confirm or deny that. Does the Dinosaur Empire have in store for for the Getters? Much less the Andromeda Stellaration. What will they bring to the table this time? Basically, yun ang tanong. So again, Get the Robo Arc Episode 6. Two thumbs up. Title of the next episode has been teasered. I am curious about the title, but I don't trust it completely. So, you know the drill, Maka Lifestyle. We will wait for next week and watch that episode. So, in the meantime, enjoy the other reviews in this digest, alright? she doesn't usually do is what ram her robot into the monster but before that she ejected Kimmy out of there much to his objection Kimmy finds siesta and unfortunately hell both alive nag showdown nasugatan si si Kimmy dito tinapon lang pa naman siya ng espate akala ni hell she can entrance siesta with one of her well, gazes. She was that confident, kaya sinugod na siya. Sinugod na niya si siesta para saksakin. But, I don't know how siesta did it. Siya ang nasaksak ni siesta. That's a fatal stab wound. She should be begging for mercy, but no. Nope. Her pride was too great. Babarilin na siya ni siesta sa ulo until she called out the names of what call out the name of one of her minions bigla na lang siya nawala Shasta didn't uh, leave that battle uninjured she broke her shin <laughs> then uh, I think several days later she's recuperating in their uh, in their apartment Kimmy bought apples for her in the market and he finds this runaway child but according to the child she's already 17 years old Even I don't believe her. <laughs> so, inuwi niya muna yung bata sa kanilang apartment. And while wow, Siesta got pissed. Kasi, itong batang ito kinain lahat ng mansanas na binili ni Kimmy. And she was, and she was supposed to make apple pie out of them. <laughs> Kinusap naman niya yung bata. And she, she struck a deal with the kid. Sabi ni, well, uh, something to this, something to that effect. Si Nabi Nishesta. If you pose as me, then you can stay here for free. 
of course, lalabas sa psychic ulit. Lalabas sa psychic doon si Kimmy. So, this now explains that the sidekick front act, Kimmy has done this before. Yeah, he's quite comfortable with it. Kaya pala. Final scene, well, um, Phoebe, their, their, their lady cop friend, pays a visit at binalita sa kanila dalawa na the series of heart harvests has resumed. Pero din ni Diyos na agad ni Siesta that that is hell's doing. Kasi we all know na pinatay ni Hell sa harapan nila si Cerberus the one well, the first one to, who's doing this heart harvesting and now well holding on to that Shesta now believes that this is now Hell doing the dirty work and Phoebe said that there is only one Uh, device that can stop spes altogether that can actually put them down it's called the eye of sapphire i see some connections here if you have it i'm going to explain that later but I... It's a damn good episode. Yeah. Let's break this episode down first ARD style, shall we? Base. First half of the episode, it was tense. Kasi talagang pakpakang umati ka po. Halos. Dahil, well, Hell has her monster. Siesta and Kimmy have their, um, have their mecha. <laughs> There was even one funny moment here where Siesta called, um, kasi pina, pina, may, well, may rocket punch actually ang, ang robot na to. But she called it Rocket Hands. <laughs> eh, pero na siya ni Kimi doon. Don't you think it should be called Rocket Punch? <laughs> Something to that effect. You can call that a, oh, Mazinger Z reference. Yeah! Mazinger Z. I'm a huge Mazinger Z fan, alright? Mazinger Z is the reason why I became an anime fan all those years ago. 43 years ago. I really like the pacing of this episode. Because, um, first half of the episode, yes, they were they were dealing with this, uh, with this bitch named Hell. If they take this one down, Spes is done. Ganon lang yan. But they weren't. They weren't able to uh, to either arrest her or well, just to fail to kill her. Andole, ay nakatok, shotgun, rifle yung yung patent rifle na dala niya. Ayun, no, nakaganon na. Right on her head. Nakatoto lang ganon. She was. Well, Siesta was that close to putting a bullet in her head. Then she calls out, "Camilion, bigla na siya lawala." Up to that point, the episode was intense. And you know my lifestyle. If an episode is intense, the pace is fast. Then it started to slow down because uh, yeah, the other half of the episode is purely aftermath. Because na injured pala si Shiesta, and Kimi is nursing her back to health. Nagkakaroon na ano ng suspecha si Siesta na na type siya ni Kimi <laughs> bigla na lang bigla na lang nung binanggit ni Siesta yun eh naghilong talilong bigla si Kimi confirmed Kimi likes Siesta I never thought Kimi is into older women the pacing will make you realize that yeah That's how good the pacing is. Now, anyway, uh, and the final scene. It's when it's during the final scene that the uh, that the pace picked up again. Because based on the information Fubi gave them, mm-hmm. Spes is at it again. Siyono mo sa kanila, and the only way there's uh well the ultimate way to stop them, to fully put them out of business, is a jewel called the Eye of Sapphire. 
Here's the connection I saw there. Palagay ko ang Eye of Sapphire. Yung mata ng yung mata ng idol na ngayon eh member na ng team ni Kimi. I forgot her name already. God damn it! <laughs> yun yung yun yung fake eye ngayon ng babae yun. That's that's my suspicion here. We're in a detective anime. Yeah, you as a viewer should explore the connections. Flow naman. First gear shift is when sinugod na ng robot yung monster ni Hell. Yeah, that's when uh, that's the action pack sequence I'm looking for. I call that a gear shift because you can actually deep, deep dive into that sequence. Here is Siesta trying to stop Hell, the leader of space, from uh, releasing her diabolical plan. Pero, it got me to thinking, ganito ba kalalim ang, ang hidwaan ni Siesta at ng space? Ano ba ang, uh, ano ba ang punod-dulo ng lahat ng ito? Just, well, It just takes me back to the days of well, James Bond was dealing with a uh, Spectre. Yeah. You can say that Spectre is his arch enemy, because every case his his Majesty assigns him to, Spectre's always involved, is somewhat involved. They always come. They always come back for. Uh, they always come back for seconds when the name James Bond. Uh, appears yan lang yan eh. James Bond had Spectre for an arch enemy so in this anime Siesta had Spes but if you go deeper than that siguro there's been a rivalry going on between Siesta and Hell even before Hell started Spes kasi ito napansin ko kay Siesta with that gear shift Malagang, she, she is so eager to kill hell whereas most of the time she is calm and collected when it comes to um, catching other criminals pero pagdating dito sa space kay, kay hell talagang halata mo eh through her um, her movements her actuations but not in her face talagang malaki ang galing niya sa space particularly kay hell now That's something we really need to um, to dig deeper into. Kasi, that's why I call it a gear shift. Dahil, wow, I just deep dive into it. Daming questions eh. Bola sa hidwaan na yan. I, I just really can't avoid those, asking those questions. Second gear shift is, well, hell escapes. Pero nasaksak na siya rito ni Siesta. And Siesta was was already point blank range in in putting hell down right there. They were that close to um to well, to finishing space off right there. Ano ne? Okay, lalagyan na lang yan ng bala sa ulo itong itong leader nila. But she, hell was able to escape. Talagang sayang. Talaga nang hinayang ako. Alright. Nang hinayang talaga ako. You know, every detective anime has a, um, uh, is entitled to a violent ending in every episode. Like, uh, well, I'll give you the best example. Sherlock Holmes versus William James Moriarty. That's a violent end. Pero, um, according to the book, uh, I forgot the, um, I forgot, forgot the name of the Sherlock Holmes book. Pareho, well, we all know the ending. Pareho silang bumagsak to sa waterfall, di ba? But days later, uh, Sherlock Holmes resurfaces in in his own office. Nag, nagpipipa pang ganun. Because, well, sometimes, uh, the main protag gets to, uh, gets to go toe-to-toe with such, with such enemies. Yung talagang, yung talaga kalangang pito ka, yung, um, What you call this? Yung talagang masama ang balak sa mundo. 
They need challenges like this in order to sharpen their own skills as detectives. Siesta is no exception. So this is her arch enemy, Sihel, and she was that close. She was that close to ending it all right there. You know, talagang ano eh, hindi mag hindi pa uhuli ng boy itong itong putang ng hell na to eh. So this gear shift showed us as how dangerous space is. Baka nga up to now, tinatarget pa rin nila si Kimi. Especially now, he's slowly establishing his own detective team. At palagi ko, all, well, of course, Char is Siesta's daughter. Si Nagisa naman, yun ang nakareceive ng puso ni Siesta. Heart transplant, successful heart transplant yun. So, that's the connection right there. Now, when it comes to uh, the idol girl, her connection with Spes will be that fake eye. That's, but, hey, that's just my theory. Based on what this two-part backstory has been telling us, you can now see the connections coming. All you have to do is connect those dots. Ganon katindi ang gear shift na to. Final gear shift is when, well, Fuobi tells Siesta and Kimi that Spes is added again. The heart harvesting has resumed, pero Siesta stopped her there at sinabi ni Siesta, That's hell. Well, well sinigod na naman siya ni Kimi. Cerberus, Cerberus died in front of us. That's more likely. That's our most likely suspect. Kaya, well, at yung sinabi ni Fuubi na the one thing that will totally stop Spes is this Eye of Sapphire. No, si no, the moment Fuubi said that, sabi ko, nakupuntara is this Eye of Sapphire must be that fake eye um, the idol girl was wearing. Wow! I can connect the dots right here, right now, because of that gear shift. These three gear shifts that I saw definitely will play a role down the line in this anime. Alalahanin niyo mga lifestyle. We're now in episode 6. We just ended the first half of this, of this uh, anime's run. So the second half of the run will start next week. With the information we got from this episode, pwede natin baunin yun sa episode 7. Ba baunin natin yan. Plot-wise. Hey. Backstories with with clean plots is a rarity in anime these days. This one is this one is no exception. Oh, this one is one of them. Although, well, so far, it's a two-part backstory. The plot may be clean, but I truly believe that this was the last case Siesta handled. Baka, dito, baka ito pa yung... Baka itong kasong ito pa ang... Um, pumatay sa kanya eh. This backstory isn't over yet. So, we really need to know what really... What, how Siesta died. But I got a really good feeling. This case killed her. Malinis ang plot na to for another thing. Cause although it is a backstory, although it's a backstory episode, it's still the continuity is um is clear cut. The um the circumstances behind it, yep, pretty understandable. And well, we get to see how vile an organization space is. Kasi yung leader nila eh, halang ang pituka, the way I see it. And the plot will make you realize that. <laughs> so, pace, flow, and plot. I almost did not distinguish one from the other. That's how fucking great this episode is. So, the detective is already dead. Episode. Six, but you're gonna have a ton.
personally, I am excited as to how the second half of this anime's run is going to uh, it's going to go and how it's going to go down. Bottom line, because hey, the most recent thing we learned here is that this Eye of Sapphire that Fuobi's that Fuobi mentioned will can take down Spes once and for all. You, you can connect the dots yourself. This Eye of Sapphire can put Spes down. And Spes is doing its darndest to kill the idol girl. Even blackmailing her into killing Kimi and Nakisa. But uh, uh, Kimi was able to win her over. And sinabi lang, sinabi lang ni Kimi na, well, damay dami lang tayo. Mabuti ba? Sumama ka na sa amin. In effect, Kimi is also saying, Spes is after you. You should join my team. Although, uh, he's... <sighs> Come on, Kimi. Didn't Siesta teach you self-confidence? You're a fucking good detective now. Live up to it. Own it. That's what Siesta wants you to do if she were still alive right now. After all, Kimi learned from the world's greatest detective. So, I'm personally excited as to how, um, as to how the second half of this episode's run will look, of this episode, this anime's run will look like. Are you? So again, the detective is already dead. Episode 6. episode has been teasered. <laughs> I ain't paying much attention to it. <laughs> so, you know the drill Maka lifestyle. Wait for next week and watch that episode. Sigurado, deep dive fest na naman yan. Just like what we did now. Well, in the meantime, enjoy the other reviews in this digest. It's quite a quite an amazing story in this episode. Cause eh, first half of the episode is the usual uh, antics the Duke and Alice get into. Of course, uh, Alice uh, harassing the Duke sexually. <laughs> it's always it's always a blast seeing seeing Alice do that. All right, But the second half, whoa, it somehow got serious because um, the Duke and Alice were actually preparing to go to the Witch's Sabbath kasi sinusundo na sila nila Cuff at Zane and well they were in this um, closet of sorts Zane sees a, a large uh, mirror he uses that to make them enter to the Witch's Sabbath kung magang ginawa niyang pintuan Port, uh, portal to to that to the world of witches. Ooh. Looks like Zane has shown how how powerful a witch he is. They're already in the witches world. Nag roll call among witches. The woman that greeted Alice, whom we thought was costumed. No, that's her real face, and her name is Daleth. Siya, uh, siya palang pinaka presiding officer ng witches Sabbath. In interview siya ng konti ni Alice, nalaman na rin ng Duke that Daleth knows the witch that that cursed the Duke. Kilalang kilala niya. And well, she just told the two that she despises that witch. Nag, nakiusap pa nga na huwag na siyang pag-usapan. Na huwag na pag-usapan yung witch na yun dahil patay na ang witch na yun. I think the Duke's quest to uh to remove him of this curse has, has been thrown a curveball with this information. Tinasabi rin ni Dalit na sumuko na lang siya. Because, well, the curse that was placed on him was placed by a witch that is 
that is not the soul soul type what's not a uh, well according to her own words run of the mill hindi pipichuging witch yung naglagay sa kanya ng curse na to so it's not that easy to break no one no other witch it's uh, bottom line this is a curse no other witch can break yun ang gusto niyang palabasin dito kila kila Duke at Alice then an accident occurred na amoy na mga ibang witch na nandun silang dalawa so well not without Dalit's help tinulo na niya ganun yung robe ng Duke sinuno nasunog ayun na amoy sila then they they scamper back to the mirror pero before they were able to do that one of the witches actually 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 caught Alice so ang ginawa ng Duke wow looks like the curse has now a new has uh, a new found use the Duke can now use this curse to protect Alice hinawakan ng niyang ganun yung tentacle na bumalot kay Alice patay pati yung pati yung plant monster na nagtapon ng tentacle yun namatay din so nagtaka yung nagtaka yung witch na na nagsamon nagsamon sa plant monster na yun teka ba't namatay ito what the hell gumulong ba napakamot na lang ang ulo the duke is more powerful than he's than he than he ever than he ever realizes to be he can use this curse to actually help people he was able to protect Alice with this curse at when they well final scene when they were able to come back to the mansion ayun napahang talagang bumilim sa kanya si Alice sabi niya you saved my life your grace na syempre pa cute pa sexy <laughs> she she will harass the duke at every chance she gets okay which makes this which makes this anime so fun to watch but at that moment now we now we can see how um how useful this curse can be to the duke wow i wouldn't want to be the duke's enemy right now especially if you're a witch nope <laughs> after after what he just learned deep inside he's pissed off but i wish the duke would see that this curse has a use this curse can actually be useful number one of course to protect alice and probably everyone around him i think this is the start of maybe a streak for the duke and probably his enemies will now call him the duke of death you do not want to mess with the duke right now if you're uh if you're a witch those two witches are the only two witches that are welcome in the mansion if you ask me overall it's a fucking good episode for me it is probably uh well it's the anime's it's this anime's best episode so far what a way to cap off the first half of its run cutting base well the usual slowness of a romance anime and um uh the dark comedy that uh it has that uh, well it has a dark comedic tone to it the pacing of this episode is superb that's when the pace actually picked up because well they're in no man's land and the duke is risking it all right now just to find out well just to seek out the witch that cursed him but well, later on na lang niya na through Daleth na namatay na pala yung witch na yun. the pace will make you feel sorry for the duke because of what he learned here so what happens now bottom line how will he live the rest of his life now ano puro 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 hanggang advances na lang si Alice hindi ba niya kaya naman habang buhay siya hindi, hindi na ba niya pagbibigyan nito hindi man naman din niya si Alice di ba I really feel sorry for the Duke once when uh, he heard 
that the witch that put this curse on him is already dead. You would f yeah. I really felt sorry for him. Flonaman. Well, first gear shift was... Uh, it's a totally irrelevant gear shift, but I would still call it a gear shift because this was the time, this was that scene where the Duke and Alice uh, went into the uh, the conservatory, which has well, which is practically abandoned. Mukhang nakalimutan na ang parting ito ng bahay. Talagang ang dami ng, ang dami ng wild plants. Uh, well, there, there are potted plants there. Those are the plants that should be there, pero ang dami ng unwanted plants. So, well, I think this was the first time that the Duke's curse has been useful. So, they, they just, he just touched the wild plants and those wild plants died. So, nag, uh, to na. So, making it easier now for Alice to clean them all up. Kasi, syempre, patay na. So, hindi mo na kailangan bunutin yun. Kung nakaplanta pa sa lupa, madali nang bunutin kasi patay na eh. I feel happy for the Duke in this gear shift. Kasi, um, he's, he, he's, well, he's finding ways to, to make himself useful in the house. Make this curse useful. So, that's the best example. The first one, I called it a gear ship because through this scene, there is still hope for the Duke to live a quality life. He's finding ways of making this curse useful. You know, gardening, killing. Well, major environment friendly nga ito eh. They don't. They didn't. They didn't use weed. They didn't use um. Uh, they didn't use chemicals here to kill the weeds. <laughs> no, all, all the, all they needed was the Duke's curse. Nawakan, patay. Second gear shift was well, when they entered the witch's world with Cough and Zane. Whether we admit it or not, the Duke is a wimp. <laughs> pagpasok na pagpasok niya. Don't worry, Alice. I can protect you. This is a fine example of facing your fears. I'm gonna go personal development uh, buff on this gear shift. That's why I call it a gear shift. There's a life lesson to be learned here. The Duke needed to do this because he really wants to break the curse. And even though he uh, he went practically into the lion's den, he still did it because he really wanted to break this curse. That's that's the only thing that matters to him right now. The fear he experienced when when he was when him and Alice were walking down this path in the witch's world, na talagang ang dami witch, right? There, these witches are these witches are scary looking. Most of them. Si Zane at si Kaf lang hindi nakakatakot. Hindi nakakatakot ang itsula dito. <laughs> That's how scary this place is. So, yeah, it's, it's scaring the shit out of the Duke. But despite that fear of his, he is still walking down this path. Because he really wants to break this curse. That's what everyone should do. Right? The only way to to get rid of your fear it's not just by facing it by walking down the path to it mm. deep dive that's a really good deep dive gear shift final gear shift the third one is when whoa the duke actually showed the curse's power in the witch's world just goes to show you that um that this gear shift showed us how how both useful and powerful this curse is. Now that the Duke knows that the witch that placed the curse upon him has already died, he might as well make the most out of this curse. Number one, by protecting Alice. He just did that in this gear shift. It's obvious why, well, it's a qualified gear shift because he, the Duke just showed the witch's world how uh, how powerful this curse is and 
I think, well, the Duke just in inadvertently sent a message to the other witches. Bottom line, you mess with me, you mess with Alice, you mess with everything around, you mess with everyone, with every person around me. My hand will be on yours. Ooh. Imagine if the Duke has this kind of mindset. Oh yeah. Probably pro probably someone will step up and uh, say their piece regarding his curse. These three gear shifts that I saw, yes, will play a role. That's the way I see it. I'm being prophetic now. Will play a role in the second half of this anime's run. Very crucial lahat. And very crucial ang second at ang third, yung final gear shift. Those are very crucial ones. Imagine uh, the Duke uh, realizing this curse's potential in helping people, in well, in protecting Alice, okay, the woman he loves. Plotwise, Malinis, despite um, showing two different stories. Uh, I'm sure you uh, I'm sure you recognize that my lifestyle first half of the episode is uh, well the usual the usual um, the usual idiosyncrasies these two get into okay uh, Alice was showering the Duke knocks on the door and whoa in all her naked glory Alice shows himself to the Duke that was that on the wait, but but get up. What's what? Cool, Nate. Okay, so she's a very compassionate person, Alice. That's why the dog is so much in love with her. <laughs> the second half of the episode, halatang ibang ibang story ane, ibang story. But for, I think, I think the, I think the continuity of the entire storyline bonded those two plots together. Kaya. You can tell na malinis ang, ang combined plot. Seamless yung pagkaka transition from one plot to another. For me, uh, for me it's two plots. Pero sinabi ko pa ni malinis ang, ang overall plot ng episode. Because it was well, uh, was well melded. Kumaga ginete robo ang <laughs> ang plot ng episode nato seamless talaga so pace flow and plot they all came together for this episode kaling best episode of this anime so far well at least for the first half of its run so the talk of death is made episode six. I really want to see how he's going to live the rest of his life now. How is he going to uh, express his love to Alice? Mm -hmm. How is he going to make that curse useful? We've seen two very effective uses here in this episode. Just goes to show you how, well, how timid but OP a character the Duke is. During this, uh, the final gear shift, Wow, I think the Duke is now um, is now finding ways of making this making this curse useful just in case it can never be broken. So yon, he's found two uses: gardening and protecting Alice, and probably sending a message to the other witches that you mess with the people around me, my hand will be on yours. And eventually, 
na uh, malakas ang pakiramdam ko eventually someone will will uh, step forward and and tell all about this curse the Duke deserves it he's a good man what adventures will be in store for the Duke and Alice what other uses can the Duke uh, have this curse for Gandang question yan. So again, The Dog of Death and His Maid, Episode 6. Another two thumbs up from this great anime manga lifestyle. Title of the next episode has been teasered. Ang boring naman na title. But, in all indications, we must not trust it. Boring na title kasi. So, you know the drill mga lifestyle. We wait for next week and watch the next episode. In the meantime, enjoy the other reviews of this digest.